Good evening. I would like to call the meeting of Thursday, May 25th, 2017, regular school committee session meeting to order. Um, we will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So tonight is our reorganization meeting. Welcome to our, our two new members. And at this time, I am seeking a nomination for the role of school committee chair. I'd like to nominate Jean to be the chair. Um, I'll second. I'm following my notes. Well, I don't have to <laughs> I second. wasn't supposed to take a second. Right. Do but I am way. supposed Optional. to say, are there other nominations? Seeing none, is there a second? Second. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, roll call vote to confirm the nomination. Um, I will start with Jennifer Devlin. Yes, I confirm. Mina Barath. Yes. John Graziano. Yes. Nancy Cavanaugh. Yes. Do you vote for yourself? I, I Jean will. Birchman. Yes. <laughs> Thank Doesn't you. Very full I, votes anyway. Yes. Right, right, exactly. I, am, I am delighted to turn the meeting over to you, Jean. <laughs> okay. Um, and typically, for our new members, what we actually do is we actually do reorganize and we we move seats. Yeah. Um, okay. And but I, before we do that, I'm turning it over to you. I don't know if you want to. All right. Well, why don't we do the vice chair first, okay. and then um, we can we can reorganize seats, and then we'll go through the rest of the agenda. So um, I would seek a motion for vice chair um, for the school committee. I'd like to nominate Nancy Cavanaugh for vice chair. Does, is there, is there a second? second okay. Yeah. Um, and all in favor? Aye. Yes. Yes. Any opposed or abstained? You're not going to oppose yourself? Okay. All right. So I think we're all set. <laughs> That's chair and vice chair. That's always a good sign. Thank you. All right. So typically we have the, the chair sit next to the superintendent in case there's last minute adjustments. So we're going to do a little shuffle and then we'll really get underway. I'm going to take the corner seat. <laughs> Everybody remember your name tag or else people will be very for your patience um, so I will read through the agenda and then we will get right into our meeting we'll start tonight with recognitions um, then we have our first opportunity for public comment uh, we'll have reports to the school committee from student council assuming they arrive we will have liaison reports um, I'll give a report about executive minutes that were voted in our last executive session we'll have an update a report from the superintendent an update regarding our art program for from Colleen Giannino and an update regarding our music program from Craig Hay under new business we will talk about our summer meeting dates um, we will discuss a proposed a proposal for a district enrollment and capacity subcommittee um, we will appoint a liaison to the accept board of directors and the tech voting member sorry and then we will consider the school physicians contract after that we will have a second opportunity for public comment following followed by items by consensus and then we will adjourn so um, now that all of that is un out of the way why don't we start with recognitions so dr. McLeod Thank you. So this evening, um, I am delighted to um, recognize Owen Fitzpatrick. He is here tonight along with his family. Um, Owen was uh, one from the top 50 essayists in the US. He was the first place winner in Massachusetts for his age category in a contest that he entered at the encouragement of Mrs. Norby, um, along with, I believe, his classroom teacher, um, Mr. Kearney, is that correct? 
Um, and he, not only did he reach that level, but then he received honor citations from both the House of Representatives and the Senate. Um, and I was delighted to meet with him last week in my office. Um, I'm very pleased to invite Owen to come up um, and receive your recognition tonight. And I would ask that Mrs. Norby uh, uh, attend with him and come on up. So Owen and Diane, please join us. We'll have you sit over here so they right can, over there. you can talk into the microphone so they can hear you on HCAM. So welcome. So maybe first a little bit more of an introduction about the actual contest would be helpful. Okay. And then I know that Owen is expecting a question from me. Oh. <laughs> All right, good evening. Um, um, if you don't know who I am, I'm Diane Norby, um, the librarian at the middle school. <coughs> And it's my really distinct pleasure to introduce Owen uh, Fitzpatrick, who is in the sixth grade at the middle school. Early this year, um, Owen entered a, a writing contest upon my encouragement, um, a contest that Dr. McLeod had earlier brought to my attention. The challenge, titled Letters About Literature, was to write a letter to an author whose work changed your perception of yourself or the world around you. Now, this could have been perceived as an intimidating endeavor, especially because the sponsor was the Massachusetts Center for the Book in partnership with the Library of Congress. Now, these are no slouch organizations. <laughs> <laughs> well, that didn't bother Owen. Writing a letter to Charles Dixon, Dickens in response to A Christmas Carol, Owen compared his personal journey to that of Scrooge's Metamorphosis. His beautifully written introspection revealed deep insight into this piece of classic literature. And since Owen is an avid reader who makes great use of our middle school library, he is living proof of the impact reading has on one's ability to write. Owen's letter placed first in the state in his age division and in the top 12 at the national level. We're all very, very proud of this exceptional young writer. Congratulations, Owen. Thank you. So, Owen, I know that you were asked to read your letter and that you're really tired of reading your letter, so we're not going to ask you to do it here tonight, although the school committee, I'm sure, after meeting you, are going to say, could we get a copy of that, Dr. McLeod, because we'd like to read it. And, and if that's okay with you, I'd be happy to share your letter with the school committee. Um, but I did want to ask you, where did you get the idea to pick this book for your letter? Well, I just really liked how Scrooge um, changed, how the ghost helped him change over time. Well, with me, I had no ghosts. I had no one to help me except my family. Um, when I was younger, I was a little more out of control, and I didn't control myself a lot. And a lot of the kids at my school did not well. They didn't get used to it as quick as I did. But over time, I think I, think I changed. Um, I, got, I, got, I improved controlling myself. And well, overall, I, I can just say I got better. I, yeah. Well, that, that, that is wonderful. And I, I like the part you said about the ghosts. Yeah, um, because we all have those ghosts. Um, <laughs> So I don't know if the school committee, I, I did prepare Owen to let him know that you would, there would be no surprise questions, but I'm sure you have comments <laughs> for this young man. Yeah, do you want to start? Yeah, it's amazing, amazing achievement. Oh, thank you. And you're just in sixth grade, and to be able to introspect and speak and write, great job. Thank you. Congratulations, it's a very impressive. I'm looking forward to reading the letter but I understand not, not making you read it again. So <laughs> thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, I want to congratulate you too. As a former sixth grade ELA teacher, this is a, amazing to hear that a sixth grade student grabbed on to a book like, like A Christmas or a Christmas Carol and, and, and just took it, you know, internally. Good job. It's fantastic. Yeah. Good work. I echo the congratulations of the others and I'm really in awe of your introspection and that you really took it to a whole new level. And wow, what an amazing achievement. 
Thank you. Yeah, I agree. I think it's remarkably mature to take a, to assess yourself in that way, and then also brave to write about it. Um, and the fact that you're reading Dickens at your age is really promising for the future. So I suspect this isn't the last time you'll be sitting at this table, and we'll be talking about an achievement that you've had. But I'm very happy to have been here for the first time. So congratulations. It was really wonderful. Thank you. And Owen, the school committee has a, a special certificate for you, and I want you to know that it was really in honor of you going forward um, that this is kind of a new um, thing that the school committee is going to be doing. We often recognize students at school committee meetings, but we've talked about the fact that wouldn't it be nice to be able to give them something to recognize their achievement, and so you have started that. Um, with this certificate. I am certain that your mom will be framing this <laughs> along with all of the other achievements and that one day there will be no room left on your wall. So um, I would delighted to, to present you with this certificate of, achie of achievement on behalf of the school committee. You can just come right up here. Thank you. Right, Thanks. so we're all set. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Owen is also welcome to stay, but <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again. Do we have other recognitions? There was nothing else that could surpass that tonight, so we wanted to leave him on his own, so no. Okay, does anybody else have anything that they wanted to recognize that happened? I just want to give a, a really quick um, kudos to the Hiller Shark Tank program that was on Tuesday night. It was a fantastic new program that was facilitated by some community members as well as our teacher, Doug Scott. And there were four teams that had outstanding new business ideas. And the sharks were very um, thorough and rigorous in their questioning. There was a winning team that won a thousand dollar scholarship. It was fantastic. It was wow. really, really well wow. done. Um, and I think a tremendous, these kids have been working on this all year. So I think it was a tremendous opportunity and I just really wanted to give them a shout out because um, it was. Who's the organizer team? Well, um, Tom Coburn brought it forward, I think, to um, to Evan and um, they worked obviously with Doug Scott and then there was another man whose name is escaping me right now and Bob Levinson so the three of them kind of worked with the students all year on this and did a lot of coaching and connected them with people in the industry and in the community so it was a great opportunity for the kids really great uh, awesome yeah Okay, so I think we're going to skip over our reports to the school committee from the student council because they don't appear to have been here today. So uh, maybe they're studying for finals. Um, so we can move right into liaison roles and, re excuse me, re liaison reports. Because we're going to, oh, we're talking about liaison roles and reports. I, sk I skipped no, public comment. Thank you. Gosh, I did. I'm sorry. I'm going to back up. Next on our agenda is public comments. So I do see some some new faces in the audience. Is there anybody here that for public comment that wants to come up and speak? Okay, come on up. And if have you, so we'll invite you to come up here. And um, I see some new faces in the audience, and you know we have some new ta faces at our table. So I'm going to just briefly outline um, sort of how public comment works because I. It's a little bit of an awkward thing in a formal business meeting, so just so we all have the same understanding going in. Um, you're welcome to speak on whatever topic uh, you'd like to address. We'll usually give people three minutes, and then after I'll have Nancy do the timer, and then once you hear the buzzer, you can wrap up your thoughts. Um, typically, we don't go back and forth a lot, but if we need to, we'll add a future agenda item to address whatever it is that you're bringing up, or maybe the superintendent will follow up with you, So, just so we're all sort of clear on how it works. Okay, and we'll thank. ask you to start by telling us your name and your address. Certainly. Th well, first of all, thanks for setting the ground rules. I appreciate that. That might change what I was about to say. Anyway, okay. my name is Jeremy Schoenhorn. Uh, my son is Noah, and he is presently in the ninth grade. We live at 10 Chamberlain Street. And the reason I, I'm here tonight is to, I guess, propose a question to the board. Um, helping to elucidate for me um, sort of a, I guess, what amounts to a quota for AP bio. So my son um, was not 
I guess, granted permission to join AP Bio, and there's a, a roster of reasons that were pre presented, um, which is great, except it didn't work in his favor. So one of the things that I find a little bit, oh, I don't know, unfortunate, and I'm trying not to take this stuff personally, but you imagine as a dad, you might. Uh, when you know the school who's supposed to advocate for education and to enable kids to be the bright star they were meant to be uh, says no and I find that kind of sad and you know there are a lot of stories anecdotal and probably some scientific where kids are born natural scientists and they go through the school system and suddenly STEM is about the last thing that anybody's interested in and you know, we're like, yeah, you, you go when your kids are little, you're saying, oh, well, that can't possibly happen. And now I'm presented with a scenario and a situation where it does, and not necessarily from the kids' own doing, um, but because the system doesn't really advocate for everybody to learn when they're interested in learning. And that really, really, really is hard for me to explain to him. And what I was hoping tonight, with your help, is to get some guidance on how you would explain it to my kid that, oh, I'm sorry, though you want to learn, we're not going to let you. And then, you know, the email string says, well, if you wait a year, you're guaranteed a slot. Well, that, that's kind of, I don't know, why should he have to wait if he's interested in learning now? And what really troubles me is in a year's time, he'll be so turned off by the system that's supposed to help him that he's not going to take the class. And I don't know how to keep that fire lit, and I don't know what you guys are going to do about that. So with that, I'll shut up. And with any luck, uh, this esteemed committee will help me help explain the situation to my son in a meaningful and impactful and simple way so that he'll understand why he should still be interested in learning and participating and be energized. And I want you to help me help him. Thank you. Okay. Is there anybody else that wanted to speak? My name's Gary Abernathy. My son's Benjamin. He's in the ninth grade also. In, in similar situation, he was uh, denied uh, getting into AP Bio, which is something he's really interested in, something he was very excited about doing. Um, in, in similar concerns, you know, trying to keep him excited and interested in school and looking at the options, and one of the options saying, oh, go take AP Bio junior year, and, and he's struggling with well, does that mean I take regular bio sophomore year and then AP bio in junior year? That doesn't, fundamentally doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, you know, other concerns he has and, and I have, if he doesn't take AP bio, is he going to be excluded from taking AP chemistry and AP physics because it's mostly going to be the AP bio kids taking AP chemistry and AP physics. So he's going to have that much more trouble getting into the, the higher level classes. I, admittedly, I, I understand there's a limited number of slots. Um, he, he struggled, you know, his first first semester freshman year. He was learning how to, what his study skills were and how to do the study skills. He's made a lot of progress. But to penalize him for the rest of his high school career because he didn't have the study skills his first semester of freshman year, Frank, doesn't seem fair. Uh, it's going to impact him a lot longer than just, just high school. It's going to go into college and beyond. Um, I, I'd like the, the team here to consider what would it take to make another section of AP Bio. From what I understand, there's enough kids that want to take it. Um, but we've been told, no, we're not going to do it. But I haven't heard why and I haven't heard what, what options have been considered. That's it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Is there anybody else that wanted to speak? Yes. My name is Sanjay Narahari. I have twins in the ninth grade. And 
I'm in the same situation as the two gentlemen there. Both of my kids were denied an opportunity to take AP Bio in the 10th grade. Um, they are hardworking, they're motivated, they are planning to take this course for a long time, and they planned future courses based on taking this course in the 10th grade. Um, and so I don't think it's right for us to deny students who want to challenge themselves the opportunity to, to do that. So I hope that the school will find a way to let the students take the AP Bio in the 10th grade and not in junior or senior year. Because not taking AP Bio in the 10th grade will impact what they can study in, in the future. Thank you. Did anybody else want to come up and speak? Okay, and we do have another uh, public comment section at the end of our meeting too, if you come up with something else that you'd like to say. Um, I, I will just say it really isn't in the purview of the school committee to weigh in on individual course um, placement for students. However, obviously, if there's a budgetary issue related to adding additional sections, certainly that's something that would come forward from the superintendent. I know she's planning to address this in her um, chair report, so that's probably all I'm going to say at this point. But I just want to say thank you for taking the time to come and, and let us know about your concerns and let you know that we don't typically make a decision on the spot, but we certainly have heard you, and I know that the superintendent will be following up as well. So um, thank you for reminding me about public comment because I also made notes about people that had emailed in that I wanted to make sure that we mentioned in the meeting. We had received emails in the last week um, regarding interest in our F-1 visa program, um, some information shared with us about trash on the loop road as well as questions about the ongoing gas gate um, proposal for uh, that's, that's happening in town. So I just wanted to make sure that people were aware that we had received communications on those topics as well. So if I didn't skip anything else, now we'll go down to um, liaison roles and reports. So first, are there any liaison reports that we need to do, John? Um, so I have a, a fun elementary school building committee report. Um, last Friday, we had um, what's called the uh, topping off ceremony, which um, there are t there were two beams that have been that have sort of toured the town. They've been outside the center school. Um, they've been at a couple of the elementary school building committee meetings so that everyone had an opportunity, or, or a lot of students and teachers at the center school and other um, members of committees were able to sign the beams that were hung on Friday as the last two steel beams and the highest two steel beams that um, will be hung on the Marathon Elementary School. So with that, the, the steel framing construction is complete, which is a, a huge milestone. Um, it was a pretty cool ceremony that um, I think some of us who have less experience in large building construction were a little curious about, but it's actually a, a tradition that dates back many hundreds of years to have a ceremony for the hanging of the highest beam. So it was, um, it was very cool to be a part of. Um, as somebody who has obviously been involved in this project from the beginning, I hadn't been over at the site in a while, and it is pretty incredible to witness the progress. Um, you can really start to see the shape of the building coming together. They have put up um, a um, functional mock-up of what the wall construction in the school is going to be. So it actually it actually looks like if you cut a section of the exterior to interior wall out of the building and, and put it on its own, but you can actually look in and see all the different pieces that exist between the exterior masonry and the interior wall, um, which I could have probably spent two hours there yeah. listening to the engineer talk about all the different um, technologies they have in there to wick away moisture, to insulate. Um, it, it's it's pretty incredible, and there were 33 different trades involved in actually putting together that mock-up. So it's 33 different trades that will be involved now on the site in building the wall. Um, they've paved a parking lot, which they did on what I believe is the hottest day we have had um, <laughs> all year. So um, the the crew did mention how brutal that day was, but it's a, a really just an awesome amount of progress. And um, it was a lot of fun to both be a part of the ceremony and also just to see the progress on that building. There's a lot of energy with the crew and the, the folks from Compass and DRA and Col Antonio over there. And uh, really, it really feels, feels like it's getting real. And the site is beautiful. It is. 
when yeah. you when you're over there and you look around it's just completely surrounded by trees and it's just it's very peaceful um, and it feels so appropriate for our youngest learners it just feels like this this protection of this circle of nature around this building and it just felt wonderful I should also note, that from the aesthetic perspective, one of the one of actually the, the coolest things to see um, was in the steel framing. You can actually see the addition, yes. so you can see they can point out where the four classrooms that were not in the original uh, design were, and it's it's awesome because it re it reinforces why it was such a good idea to do it now because they sit in between other classrooms, and as somebody pointed out, it actually evens it out with the other pot of classrooms, and then the stairwell and the extra room sit off to the side, and even with the steel beaming, you can see the difference. So had we done it after construction, it really would have looked awkward from mm -hmm. a design perspective. So even with just the steel up, you can really see yeah. what, what a great um, benefit that was to the aesthetics of the building, so. Very cool. And we're meeting again on the 12th. Nancy, do you have any? I do, actually. So the Irvine Tadaro Property Group met after having taken a little bit of time off, and we discussed, I don't know, people have been following the bus parking in Ashland, and there are some difficulties they've had moving the, um, some of the neighbors where they want to move the bus parking lot in Ashland have objected, uh, and the Irvine Tadaro Property Group had expressed uh, some willingness to work with us around figuring out when we want to get our work, our, our look to move towards feasibility and figuring out funding and all of that fun stuff. So that I think would merit a conversation with probably Ralph and you. Yep. Yeah. yeah, well that's exciting step forward anyway. Um, I was also going to give an update about from the um, athletic field subcommittee, oh, yeah. just in that we, we met this week and um, we are the designer is going to is getting ready to start doing the design but um we talked about having them come back or having d come back to the full school committee just because we need we're at a point where we need to make a decision about what sports we want to play on fields four and five currently it includes a baseball and a softball field and um i think the the subcommittee is leaning towards a recommendation for not putting those two sports on this particular field which would have implications budgetary implications for us in terms of bringing back other fields to playing condition um so i think as, as soon as we can at a at a an upcoming meeting it would be good to have um at least d come and have a conversation so that we're all aware and on the same page about what makes sense from that standpoint okay um and so i think that's it were there any other ones I'm going to suggest, Kathy, that we just we ha we postpone the discussion of our liaison roles till after um, Craig and sure. Colleen gets, so they don't Thank have you. to sit here and listen. That might be a, might be long. Yep. Um, so then, quickly, I will just make the announcement that in our executive session um, at the last school committee meeting on May 11th, 2017, the committee held an executive session for the purpose of reviewing past executive session minutes. In, according with, in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 22, I will now indicate the minutes that we reviewed and actions taken on those minutes of the following executive sessions. For the minutes of February 2nd, 2017, the school committee voted to approve those minutes and release those minutes. For the executive session minutes from March 16th, 2017, the school committee voted to approve those minutes and release those minutes um, so now we are ready for the superintendent's report and if you don't mind I'll hold on that too okay if that's okay yep that's fine I'm gonna make stars so I remember I don't skip things so then we are ready to invite Colleen Giannino up to give us an update around our art program Oh, cool. So while you're setting up, Colleen, can you do that? Of course you can, you're a teacher. The, the art show, the, it, it was just so wonderful. Once again. And thank you to all of you who attended. Yeah, and just so, I mean, I know this was your, your idea to, to extend it to include first grade right through 12th. And, the, you know, there's just so much pride 
that you see on the faces of especially the younger kids to see their artwork displayed in the high school. It, it, it's just really wonderful. Um, and to have all your teachers there, of course, it, it's just always such an upbeat night. Um, so I, I thank would, you for I all your work on that. To that the, to, I, as a parent of a first grader who was one of those kids, okay. it, it's also really, oh, it's so also really it, 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 I, I found it to be a really awesome experience for her, though, not only to have her artwork up in the high school, but then to walk around and see the incredible quality of the artwork for from our high schoolers. Yeah. Because I think even at, you know, at, at a, a young age, it sort of resonates that, you know, you always think about the, the big kids, right, and what right. they can do. And to see her work there and then sort of see the progression to what it can be, I think, is, is also inspiring, which is why I really love the, the fact that they were merged together. I thought yeah. that was really great. It was wonderful. I I usually have the most success when I just try to use the display option. Have, are you trying that? Okay. And there's also a plug-in, Colleen, over there. Okay. bring some other things with me too. So thank you for having me here tonight. Again, I'm Colleen Janino, the subject matter leader for visual art. Um, as a whole, it's been a very productive year, all the way from up from the high school down to the first grade. Um, I'm happy to announce in September, we welcomed an existing high school colleague into the high school department, Sarah Williams. Um, so now AP Art History and Yearbook are in our realm and under our wing um, and have made their home down in the sea wing. Um, additionally, in September, um, our cross-curricular Fab Lab 3D design course was kick-started thanks to a grant from the Hockington Education Foundation last June. Um, we were fortunate to be able to run three sections of this course this school year and we will be doing the same next school year. And I have to say, what that course has brought to us, it, it's expanding, it's trickling out into other classrooms. I had the pleasure of working with the laser cutter today with Christine Enos and experimenting a little for my digital art curriculum, and I know Doug Scott in tech engineering has been crossing over, so that's been a great new addition. Um, in October, Sterling Worrell, photography teacher, took three students to um, a student showcase at the MassQ conference. Um, it was Lily Hanks, Caitlin O'Connor, and Emily Taylor, and they all shared their experience in the smartphone photography course that's only a couple of years new here. Um, 37 students in October from both the RAD, the Rape Aggression Defense class, and the Graphic Design class came together in a cross-curricular field trip attending uh, Massachusetts College of Art where they visited a women's rights or human rights poster exhibition, which I was there because I'm the graphic design teacher. Um, Diane Millette, Bruce Elliott, and Charlene Belcher from the library, we all attended. It was an amazing opportunity to see these students interact with these posters and the emotions and connections they made with them um, and what they were able to bring back to school. Additionally, we had quite an interesting oh, field trip. You're up there, just oh, great. so you know. Awesome. Thank you. Um, in October as well, um, a group of students visited Purgatory Chasm in Sutton, um, where they were challenged to respond to the unique environment through their art. So students created artwork in a range of medium from photography to painting and drawing. Um, and it was just a really amazing experience. I chaperoned that and watched our students and teachers in action up on <laughs> some interesting ledges with <laughs> tripods or instantly having sketchbooks out. Um, and we set up a little exhibit of the work after the fact. And it was really just prompted um, around the idea of just getting outside to learn. Um, and we'd love to do that again. Mm -hmm. So also this fall at both Hopkins and Elmwood, the arch teachers continued their yearly tradition of supporting the HPTA with the Square One Art Fundraiser. We also had over 100 parent volunteers at both schools this year in the art room, oh. which was impressive. Um, and we are so grateful for their support. Uh, I also wanted to recognize some high school students who came to help the Elmwood art teacher at her after school ceramics class. 
Um, that was Heather Hawley, Ansley Worrell, Celia Potus, and Megan Canfield. Megan also volunteered along with high school student Victor Chang to design a mural for the Kenya Day event in Elmwood that the second and third grade students could then paint. Um, there were so many other things in addition to this that our students were recognized for this winter and spring. In January, we had two gold keys, six silver keys, and 14 honorable mentions that were awarded at the high school and middle school in the Boston Globe Scholastic Art Awards competition. A full list of student names are up on our website. Um, and this slideshow of imagery is also up there. So the slideshow that's going are some of these winning pieces. Um, I also want to recognize the HPTA who sponsors every year over 120 applicants for us so that our students don't have to worry about that cost. So it's really important that they, that they are willing to do that for us. In March, we had eight juniors and seniors participate in our annual high school honors art exhibit. It was curated by high school teacher Sterling Worrell at the Hopkinton Center for the Arts. The featured students were Elizabeth Henneberry, Emily Dembinski, Athena DeLassie, Sasha Hagen, Sarah Lincoln, Sadie Morgan, Lauren Ness, and Wyatt Elliott. In April, juniors Emily Dembinski and Lauren Tompkins were accepted to attend the 2017 Art Allstate weekend long event that will be at UMass Dartmouth this June. Um, I should also add that is another thing that the HPTA sponsors for us, for those students. And it's a rigorous, um, you get nominated by your art teachers, but these students have to apply, they have to fill out an application, they have to submit artwork, and they have to be interviewed for this process. So um, from the perspective of a junior in high school, I would consider that a rigorous process um, where they get to attend the whole weekend with several other juniors across the state of Massachusetts in this big art making extravaganza. So it's a really cool experience. Um, additionally in March and in April, the high school photo club ran its annual photo contest. Um, this year, HHS alum Alec Venegas coordinated a donation of cameras from his employer, Lomography of New York City. So all first place winners won these donated cameras with their award, which is really impressive. The following students received recognition for their work. Best in show was Marissa Cardi. First place in color was Patrick Webb. Second place in color, Brianna Toko. Third place in color, Delaney Mick. First place in black and white, Declan Curry. Second place in black and white, Grace Schachterly. And third place in black and white, Jackie Ziegler. Um, this year's juror was also an HHS alum, Maddie McKenna who majored in photography, and I hear she's back home designing some interesting jewelry, too. Cool. Uh, May, obviously, has been a busy month. We recently held our Night for the Arts, and again, for the third year in a row, it has featured work from all schools, and it just seems like it's just expanding. So um, if you saw the show, which most of you did, our art teachers are just amazing. They keep adding. Um, artist statements from all grade levels, you name it. We had art history put artwork with explanations about what they were learning in AP art history this year, so it's really becoming a, quite an event. Um, we also shared the evening with the One Act Play Festival, so I'd like to thank the drama teacher Valerie von Rosenvinge for sharing that, and as well as thank um, the chorus teacher Isaac Brody. Um, he brought Noteworthy, the high school female chorus here, for a little musical accompaniment. The 12th edition of Hop Arts Magazine was released the night of the art show, and this year it was juried by Brian Bishop, who's the chair of the Department of Art and Music at Framingham um, State University. I brought some copies of that with me, so feel free to take some on your way out. And that's also will be available to download off our website, too, with previous editions. Three principal awards were granted that evening. Um, they went to Julia Nadow for her photo titled Spring Rain. Brenna Pettipit for her prom dress design, and Lauren Tompkins also for her prom dress. And I have to say, those were probably th the first of their kind at our show. I don't recall ever having a fully constructed dress that, that was worn <laughs> at a previous event. So they were really impressive. Um, I just started getting these announcements in. On May 20th, the annual 4th Congressional District Art Competition award winners were announced at the Attleboro Museum of Art. Um, winning for her fourth year in a row, senior Sasha Hagen. Wow. 
received second place in photography, and I just found out today, junior Zachary Humans took first place for his book jacket design in the computer-generated category, and Fatima Zaidi took second place for her typographic self-portrait in the same category. So I'm extra excited because they're my wow. students. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I just wanted to note that our first grade artists will have the opportunity to display their artwork again the evening of June 5th at the annual Center School Art Show and Book Fair. So just imagine what that's going to look like at the new school. <laughs> um, and that is from 5.30 to 7.30, and we welcome everyone in the community to attend. Um, in closing, I just want to um, thank you all, thank all the members of the art department for their hard work and dedication in helping our students achieve such great accomplishments. Thank you to the district, our administrative team, the school committee, and the many community members and organizations like the HPTA, HEF, and the Hopkinton Center for the Arts. Um, it is with everyone's continuous support that we are able to be the department we are. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you Thank very you, much. Colleen. Excellent. This is a great. Exciting, but just looking at all the slideshow. Oh my God, it's hard to take your eyes off it that is. stuff. It's impressive it's what so they are capable of. And I think, you know, our students surprise themselves. Yeah, you know. and, and we should we should pause and make sure that the school committee doesn't have questions. I know, Mina, you had one really interesting question. Not that they weren't all interesting questions. <laughs> but I was interested in the answer to the question about how many of our students go on to have careers in, in the art field? So I had, let's see, I wrote down about 15 students that have fully declared an art-related major that are going off to, whether it's um, specifically an art school like Savannah College of Art and Design, or they're going to um, a you know, university like San Diego State, where they'll be able to study other things. But we've had we have students who right now have declared majors in commercial photography, architecture, mass communications, graphic design, film. A lot of film and animation this year, which was interesting to see. Um, so, and anecdotally, we hear back from students here and there about where it has taken them. Um, tomorrow morning, I have um, Kate Cheneau, who is an alum from the high school. I can't off the top of my head remember what year she graduated, but she works in um, Seattle for a company called DEI Creative, and she's a creative producer. So she's working with photographers and designers now. So I'm curious to hear. She's presenting to my class at 9.30 tomorrow. If anyone wants to come in <laughs> here, you're welcome to come. Um, so we like to invite a lot of alums back when we can, too. We've had students who work at Saucony. I have a former student who works out um, for Spider, the ski company out in Colorado now. So it is interesting to hear those stories. It's great that you're able to bring them back, and I think to John's earlier point, for younger kids to see them as role models and as a possible option for them. That's amazing. Thank you. Thanks. Awesome. Another amazing year. Thanks, Nancy. I did have one more question. Sure. Yeah. It was about, uh, you know, I think you said that some of these events are open to the community. Um, so do we advertise about that to the larger community? Do we invite them in? Mm -hmm. So I try to post announcements on the district website. Um, and the department also has a Twitter account. And I usually feed that out that way. Um, we'll reach out to HCAM. We mail out postcards. Um, we send letters home to the parents at the elementary level um, to you know, raise awareness about the event, invite them to come. I'd certainly be excited to join one of these exhibitions. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Thank you. You get a lot more invitations now that you're sitting here. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make sure I have a sense there'll be a number at the first grade uh, art show this year. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a, yeah. There's uh, a lot of yeah, I think first grade art show. Right? Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, but certainly oh, you know, wow. a lot of our seniors, too, you know, at the senior center, um, mm -hmm. I, I would think they'd be very excited to come back and come see, to too, you events. know, what you were pointing to, Dr. McLeod, at the town hall, look how your dollars are working. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Um, and we don't have a senior liaison, do we? Senior center. Do we? I don't think we do. We could talk about it. It'd be worth talking yeah, about. Yeah, I think that's yeah. a great suggestion. I mean, that is a wonderful idea. I mean, in terms of communicating direct communications mm -hmm. and invitations to events going on in the schools to mm -hmm. our seniors. 
I think that idea. would be a wonderful outreach. Yeah, that's a great suggestion. All right, does anybody else have anything? Thank you thank so you. much thank for you. coming, and thank you for all that you do for the students. Thank it's you. remarkable. Okay. okay. Thank you. <laughs> and Mr. Hay, oh, would yes. you like to come and join us and update us about our equally impressive success in the musical arena? Did you not bring an instrument prop? <laughs> <laughs> no one's singing to us? That was only in the senior recognition okay. video. <laughs> Thanks, Colleen. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome. Good evening. Thank you. Uh, my name's Craig Hay. Uh, the music department subject matter leader K through 12. Um, so just with a year in review, I guess. Uh, so uh, the music department has shown tremendous growth this year in a positive direction. The department has worked hard with continued development of new uh, development of new standards and benchmarks in order to analyze our teaching practices and track student growth. One of the things that we've been really working on is seeing where our kids are beginning to end. And obviously we can hear beginning to end. We want to make sure that the stuff that we're working on, the subjects that we're bringing up within music are really being taught and are carrying through K through 12. So we've been working really hard to try to establish that and we figured this was a good year because we had some, well, over the last three years we've had three new teachers, four new teachers join the music program. So it's like we have some new ideas and some new voices and a good idea to start really working on building our curriculum again. <coughs> um, so we've seen many positive gains in our general music classes and performance ensembles, and we've done this while also preparing for 37 different performances this year. <coughs> so here's some things that happened throughout the buildings this year. First at Center with Wendy Moran, uh, going back to last spring, she, her tremendous Flag Day programs that she puts on and is now preparing for the one in June. Um, and her absolute excitement about the new Marathon Elementary building and preparing herself already from moving from going from a cart to actually having her own teaching space and adjusting her curriculum there. At Elmwood, we had quite a change. Uh, Mrs. Diamond retired in October. Uh, she's been a mainstay there for years. And luckily, it's been a seamless transition to uh, Mr. Christopher Sweeney, who student taught here a number of years ago, uh, was working in another district, uh, and has come here and has really done very well and flourished. And it's been a, a, a seamless transition. Uh, the kids really enjoy him, and uh, from what I've observed, uh, it's just the perfect fit for him. At Hopkins, uh, we had... Uh, our teachers, Jessica Barkin, Cat O'Toole, and Caitlin McDonald. Uh, we had over 100 fifth grade chorus members this year, which is a little bit different because last year we started a new fourth grade chorus model where all students receive chorus for the year for a trimester. And the retention into fifth grade chorus this year was much greater than it had been in the past maybe five or six years. Uh, we started 50 orchestra members and 126 fifth grade band members. Wow. <laughs> At the middle school this year, uh, with uh, David Purdy, Jeremy Dodge, Lisa uh, Nielsen, uh, Cat O'Toole, and Caitlin McDonald as well, uh, we've had many performances, starting with the pep the eighth graders joining the pep band at homecoming, which ended up being a volleyball game. Um, our December, March, and June concerts. Our seventh grade band will be performing at the eighth grade promotion ceremony. Uh, the honors chorus uh, singing at the wreath laying at the state house. Um, and the other new thing that we did this year was we reevaluated our annual. Uh, trip to the Great East Music Festival. Uh, the costs were becoming prohibitive, so this year, with help with the Hopkinton Music Association, we developed our own in-school clinic, where we had uh, music teachers, music professors from the Boston Conservatory slash Berkeley College of Music uh, come in and work with the stu eighth grade uh, students in band, orchestra, and chorus. Uh, each group received close to five hours of time with those 
music professors and it helped prepare them for the Micah Festival and help prepare them for their um, concert that's next week. So it's a, it was a very, we're still working out some kinks, but rather than the old festival where we'd go and play and we had to pay a lot of money to go and maybe get five to ten minutes of time with a, a, a college music teacher, uh, we now are granting the kids an opportunity to work with someone from a place they recognize, Berkeley, and really have that opportunity to see what that next level is like. So we were uh, very fortunate for that. Uh, also at the middle school level, our micro, we did well at MICA with our middle school groups. Uh, the HMS Honors Chorus and the 8th grade orchestra received silver medals, excellent ratings, and the 8th grade band and the 8th grade chorus received bronze medals. We had 15 students be accepted to uh, Mass Music Educators Junior Central District Festival this year, which is almost double what we had last year. Wow. So uh, the talent level is improving. Well, and the teaching is doing very well. And then at the high school, um, Isaac Brody and myself, uh, we've had a very busy year. Um, starting off with the fact that we're working hard to establish for next fall, and it is going to run the AP Music Theory class in school and not have it be an online or a virtual class. So we're working at preparing ourselves to teach music theory. Um, we've had all of our ensembles do, do quite well. Uh, at MICA this year, the high school concert band and the high school orchestra receive gold medals. I do want to say that with the high school orchestra, um, for me, excuse me, that's been a, um, it was a task given to me my first year working here in Hopkinton by former music teacher Carol Spangler who said you need to start an orchestra program because we used to have one and it was really good and I'm like uh-huh right and uh, I said I'll do that and here we are 24 years later we now have a gold medal winning performing at Symphony Hall orchestra program so it's been a long long road to get it there but I appreciate all the support we received throughout the years to build our orchestra program back up. Um, our high school jazz ensemble participated in the Massachusetts Association of Jazz Educators this past March and received a silver medal. It's the first time they've, we've had a jazz ensemble in that festival. Um, just want to look a couple of things. Um, and this year for Central District, at the senior level, we had 13 students get into between the orchestra, band, and chorus. Um, we had four students make it then to all state and perform. Uh, and those students were Bella Comadromos, Rachel Chen, Dan Moreno, and Andrew Keeley. And then, for the first, well, for a first time in a while, Bella Comadromos was accepted to the All Eastern Festival. And then on top of that, she became our first ever student accepted to the National Chorus. Wow. And she performed last November in Grapevine, Texas. To go with that, uh, Rachel, and, Rachel Chen and, and Dan Moreno were selected to audition for next year's National Festival. So once again, talent level is rising and we're very proud of those students. Um, I just wanted to take time right now to thank the Hopkinton Music S Association, Clarinda Kershey President, uh, for their continued support of our concert attire for the high school, preparing the concert booklet, and, and fundraising for everything that we do K through 12. Um, the Music Association members are at every performance helping teachers by chaperoning and being greeters at the door. They've gone above and beyond to find ways to help support the music department. And as I mentioned this year, the new thing that they did was provide the clinicians. Um, I also want to thank, uh, excuse me, I also want to thank the Hopkinton Parent Teachers Association for their generous support to help our jazz ensemble participate in the jazz festivals that they did this year. And they came through when we found out Bella was making all these uh, 
national and all eastern festivals uh, to help us fund her trips there. Um, I would like to also publicly thank the David French Music Company for continuing to find ways to work with us to provide all music students the best equipment uh, possible. The dedication of Eric and his staff uh, to make sure the students and the parents of Hopkinton have, never have to worry about instruments or instruments on a bus um, is an absolutely valuable asset. Um, and in conclusion, uh, the music department and myself uh, could not do what we do without the support of the school committee, Dr. McLeod, Dr. Cavanaugh, and the whole administrative team. We're very grateful for your continued support of both the performing and visual arts, and without your support, we would not have such a vibrant art and music program. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amazing, amazing achievement. I think it's a gift to be able to pursue your passions like that. Kids are very lucky. Thank you. Um, we commented, because I know we, we were commenting at, at a recent meeting, um, of the amazing progression, right? So you see students, how many did you say are now signed up for instrumental next year in fifth oh, grade? Well, for this year, we had 126 fifth graders and 50 in band and 50 in chorus. Right, like there's very few students in fifth grade that don't participate in one or the other anymore. Um, but then to see the progression when you go to the concerts of, of students performing at fifth grade and then even just seventh grade, you know, it's just incredible. Um, the progression over time and then of course to come to the high school and see just the professionalism of I'm always impressed not only with the music because you know I, I have a music background myself so I feel like I have a different level of appreciation for what they can actually do um, but I'm always impressed with how professional the kids are mm -hmm. the amount of respect that they show and I, you, you see this in music um, that there's a certain just respect that they have for the whole performance venue um, and I watched I marveled at watching the the, the attention just with the, the the mere tap of a wand right and they're right there ready to go um, and that's a lot of teaching Craig that's that doesn't just kids don't just <laughs> do that but I think to appreciate it you have to see it you have to see where it began and then where it goes and it's just absolutely remarkable and I thank you, um, thank you for bringing all of that joy to to our buildings and an opportunity to all of those kids thank well and in particular I really I want to thank you for the length of your service to the district even even through the the dark years of very terrible budgets we were fortunate that our community really continued to support the arts and so but not only you know when other towns were were cutting back not only did we survive but we really thrived and I think in large part that's due to the creativity of you and other um, teachers and I just I love I'm so impressed hearing about basically bringing this master class here into the building for our students as opposed I mean just such a better value and so more much more efficient in terms of money of course but time and just what the kids get out of it the richness of what they get out of that and on top of everything else that you're doing to take the extra time to get the certification to teach the AP class because that's a whole other it's not just anybody that can walk on and do that you have to get the certification and it's additional time and training so I just really want to thank you we have such a rich program here and it's due to you and to all of the teachers just going so far above and beyond and um, and as Cassie said you can really see how the kids they learn so much more than how to play an instrument and um, it's just a tremendous skill in their life so congratulations to everybody thank you thank you and I, I want to echo that and just so appreciate how much passion you ignite in the the kids I know for through all the grades really but I know the high school band better mm -hmm. just because of my involvement in it but it really is nice to hear those kids really enthusiastic and say I love band I love that and look forward to that so it's a gift for them to carry onward through past high school thank you I, I'm, I'm just curious if you um, you know introduce any international music to children as part of the programs through the years we do uh, especially at our, our younger levels uh, music from around the world is incorporated um, as they get into the performance ensembles it's a little trickier because not a lot of that music has been um, um, arranged for concert band or orchestra, more in the chorus. Uh, if you listen to Mr. Brody's programs, he does typically a very wide range of, of music. 
Um, I do have to say that for this Pops concert, I, I am trying to branch out even more. I've, I've had a few students push me this year, which I think is outstanding. Uh, we did a piece of music at the Pops concert that included, um, I guess the best way to put it is technology. Uh, I have a student, Stephen Oslander, who will be heading to the University of Miami to study music and technology. And he's a DJ on the side. Um, so we incorporated a piece with band. Um, that also being said, I have a student, Elise Miller, who's a sophomore, who came and questioned me and said, well, why do we barely play any music by female composers? Okay. <laughs> so she's had a year-long project of looking up, finding, and and I've been helping her uh, find female composers. This piece that we played with the technology was by a female composer, Alex Shapiro. Um, but she's been writing publishing companies about their practice of hiring uh, women composers and or and or finding out why women do not go into composition. So it's been a very interesting uh, twist on things. So. That's great. Anybody else? Thank you so much. Thank I know you. you have an early morning. You're welcome to stay, but I don't blame you for not doing so. <laughs> Thanks, Craig. Thanks a lot. Great to see you. Thanks. Do you want to? go to your report and then we'll tackle liaisons that would be wonderful okay. thank you so part of my report was to talk about last week well John talked about the beam and uh, that was a wonderful opportunity and then the the art um, show art and one act plays um, so I guess I have two other uh, items um, both a little bit different from what I typically report um, the first had to do with the reporting through the annual town report of what appeared to be, um, it, from the teacher's perspective, inflated earnings. And what it ended up was that in the town report, the earnings included two balloon payments. It just happened that way on that particular year. So the report was accurate, but it wasn't, it appeared that all of a sudden teachers were making way more than they actually make on an annual basis. Um, so we have worked with HTA, um, Dr. Kavanaugh and myself, HR, and Mr. Sandini to put a statement out to the um, town to clarify um, and set the record straight. And I'd like to read for you tonight that statement, and, and here it is. The annual town report, specifically the school department, parentheses, teachers' payroll, for fiscal year 2016, which is July 1st, 2015, ending June 30th, 2016, includes an additional five weeks pay that was earned in 2015, but paid to teachers in July 2016. So that's very different from teachers being paid in the summer. This is money that they earn during their teaching year uh, of 2015. Uh, th this occurred due to payroll timing issues and may give the appearance that teacher payrolls were inflated for the FY16 school year, which is not the case. In other words, due to timing issues, the report shows wages that were earned in fiscal year 2015 but not paid until fiscal year 2016. So that statement has been made. It's going to be attached to the town report under that particular section. The town report has, is apparently no longer on the main web page, but the association has worked through Ms. Polnick's office and Mr. Sandini's office to meet um, the request of the HTA. And I wanted you to be aware of the statement that's out there. Are there any questions about the process or the confusion that came from this? No, but I'm glad you're making the statement because I did notice that too in the town report. Did you? So I did notice it, yeah. And I, I mean, I know to go reflect back and go back to the contract, I know that's what the teachers are earning, but still, it's good to sort of set the record straight for people who don't know, know to go to the contract. So right. It's good. Yeah, yeah. And for those watching, which I know there are several tonight, um, pointing out that you are a teacher, I think, <laughs> I think is a, an important perspective, right. you know, as a new school committee member. Um, for people to understand that you you've got that lens on it, um, I, I don't want to I I don't want to sort of d dive us into the weeds here, but it just 
because these things happen. I mean, yes. it was a payroll timing issue, but it's a payroll timing issue that could happen in the future. And just where my sort of by, by reporting, my financial reporting brain is going is I'm not sure why we would have reported it in 2016 if it was accrued in 2015. So I'm wondering if we're talking to the town at all about the procedure by which they actually mm. calculate that number and what the requirements are in terms of what we report. Because it's great that it is great that we're putting the statement out. Yeah. It would be better if next time we didn't have to put the statement out because yeah. we're able to re reflect it, the the yeah. compensation in the right way. I understand what you're so, saying because so maybe, the payment yeah. happens in July. But we but accrued it's for, it. In, but we accrued it in correct. 2015. I hear what you're saying. So a follow up to to see if there is a different way of reporting in yeah. general. Uh, again, to reflect. Yeah. The earned year compensation as opposed to the paid year compensation, which can for a host of reasons be thrown off. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. So was it not reported the previous year? or, or Right. Presumably it should have like been low they, the previous year, right? Shorted them? It was lower the previous year. Right. Yeah. So Correct. Then, that, then it was probably a particularly shocking difference. Yeah. Yeah, because yes. you're <laughs> five weeks short and five weeks heavy. Exactly. It's, yeah. Right. Okay, I understand what you're asking. Um, convey actual earnings. Okay, I will follow up so that we don't have this statement in um, at the end of May every year. Okay. Um, so I want to thank um, the individuals who came to public comment tonight with regard to the AP bio. Um, this was also something that has recently been brought to my attention, um, and, and appropriately so. Um, this is something that Dr. Kavanaugh has been working closely with Mr. Bishop and Mrs. Lachansky over the past several weeks, I want to say. Several At weeks. Several. That's true, yes. Um, and, and it seems to be rather unique to, to this year, and we're trying to figure out some of the reasons why that may be. So initially, um, I had wanted to include it in my report, um, basically t to say to you that this is something that we're working on and that have, has been brought to my attention. But I would like to, um, for the, for the, um, to acknowledge, I don't know, yeah, they are still here, um, for those who, who did come to public comment, that the things that um, I took away from the, the comments um, from tonight, and I, and I want to say that in addition, there have been two sets of parents that have reached out directly um, and one set is here tonight that, that met with me just today. Um, that what parents are looking for, um, the first gentleman talked about helping him to explain to his son and keep, and, and keep his son engaged and wanting to learn. Um, I also heard from a parent, they haven't heard why, um, and they haven't heard what options are being considered. So they understand that the decision has been made but they still are wondering or wanting to have a better explanation or, or a different, an explanation about the why. Um, and then I also heard that students, uh, that we have a responsibility as a school department and as a district to meet the needs of students who want to challenge themselves. And I want you to know and I want uh, folks who are here tonight who came, the, who made the time to come that I heard those concerns. I also heard something that I want to look into more closely on the progression from AP Bio to AP Chem um, because up until now that has not been an issue in terms of students and I understood the concern. It feels like well if they don't get into AP Bio in, in sophomore year then will that forever mean that they can't, they can't get into the other AP courses. So with all of that said um, I would propose to the school committee um, that we, meaning Dr. Kavanaugh, Kavanaugh and I, bring a report to you at your next meeting, which is June the 8th. Correct, June the 8th. Um, to answer these questions, as well as to provide, you know, I've learned a lot in the past week or so um, around this issue. And I think there's a lot of information that could really help to inform not only the school committee, but also the larger community about the challenges that are, that, that are being faced, mm -hmm. um, some solutions that may be opportunities, as well as um, some, some, um, some unique 
decisions that are made in this district. Um, and I'm not, I'm not placing judgment on any of those statements. I'm just saying that these are all things that I believe need a more thorough presentation on. So um, if that sounds reasonable to you, then under reports next at our next meeting, um, Dr. Kavanaugh, Kavanaugh and I will provide a report um, working, of course, closely with Mr. Bishop um, and Mrs. Lachansky, who, for those who are new, and I'll only do this this one meeting. You won't be new after this. <laughs> okay. This is all you get. <laughs> tonight for the foreseeable future. No, okay. no, just this meeting. I think I'll um, keep asking my questions, yeah. Dr. McLeod, until you deem me not new anymore. <laughs> no, 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 uh, no, no, no. So um, she is the subject matter leader, and you know, in other districts, that might be called the department head. Um, but our subject matter leaders, you you heard from Craig and from Colleen tonight. Um, similarly, in our science department, Mrs. Lachansky is our science, our subject matter leader. Um, so uh, Dr. Kavanaugh will be working with those uh, two individuals to gather information that answers these questions. I would like to put out there um, that if there are other questions that, that parents want asked or answered, um, that the best way, as always, is to contact Dr. Kavanaugh or myself directly. Um, and then I want to finish by saying that um, it was disappointing to me to have um, to read a comment that was that was widely distributed on Facebook today that was not accurate um, that misquoted things that w were said and and I I do give the benefit of the doubt for people hear what they hear right statements are made and there are understandings that come away from the statements. So I will give you an example. I was quoted as saying, um, they, meaning Dr. Kavanaugh and I, do not think they have an honors bio teacher who can step up um, to teaching AP. What we did say is that we do not currently have a teacher available to teach this course. And what that means is that they're fully scheduled. Um, Clearly, our teachers are fabulous, and we would be able to have any of our teachers teach um, an AP level course. And if they weren't currently able to do that, we could definitely uh, provide additional training. We have to remember that this is a sophomore level course, and they're teaching at a college level. So that's a, that's a big jump. Um, but I do believe that when comments are made in a private meeting, um, and then they're shared, um, and then it's shared many, many times. I did want to take this opportunity publicly um, to just clarify that in no way was that said, or if it was heard that way, it was definitely not intended. Um, there are also some, uh, some comments about the teacher contract and those of us who have had the experience <laughs> of, of negotiating understand that it's a very complex process. And so, of course, in a brief conversation, I can understand that things can be misunderstood. Um, but in no way does our contract limit us from absorbing additional students into current sections. Rather, there are limitations based on safety regulations, um, OSHA, I think. OSHA does make recommendations around science labs. Around science labs that we have been held to um, over, you know, over the past many years. Is that something that we can take a look at? Yes, if, that, if that's something that makes sense. Um, but it had nothing to do with the teacher's contract. And so given that it's being um, communicated and posted widely in a variety of places, um, this is upsetting information for teachers to hear especially when it's attributed to their superintendent, who did not say these things. So I wanted to have an opportunity to clarify um, in, in, on this particular message. Um, and then we look forward to coming back at your next meeting with additional information, um, with the hopes of being able to, um, as, as the individual who posted, um, did correctly quote me in saying, you know, looking at some creative solutions. Thank you. So thank you. Um, I, so thank you, and, and I would say to, to echo what Ms. Birchman said earlier, typically this is not a subject that comes before this committee, right? Um, but I think what's particularly unique maybe about 
Hopkinton, um, is we often tout when we talk about our performance that we have such a high AP participation. Yeah. Um, and so having more students who are interested in participating in AP Bio would sort of be classified as a nice problem to have yes. in some cases. Yes. Um, and so and and I also think this is a great example that we we've been talking about for a number of years of where we can also be forward thinking and think about not just how we can creatively solve this, but what if this is a next year's budget problem too? Mm -hmm. And you know, be able to have these conversations mm -hmm. now as opposed mm -hmm. to just thinking about it in November. So, um, so I appreciate the the work that both you and Dr. Cavanaugh are, are going to do, and I, I look forward to the report. Um, you know that that just again to set expectations, the report that barring budget implications may not have anything for us to do. Right. Um, right. But I think it's great for awareness, especially given the the number of, of the focus on APs at the high school. Yeah. And, and John, I'll just reply to your statement it, it, in that. And thank you for, for making that clarification in terms of roles. Um, but you know that we feel passionately about educating, and that's our major role. So that, that includes educating you and the community on issues that I believe, and you heard the comments tonight, there's a lot of confusion. Mm -hmm. And there's missing information. Of course there is. This is the first time. Maybe that's not true. Maybe some of the families have older students who have already gone through this. But um, there's a lot of misunderstanding around AP criteria, um, override process, all of those. And, and quite honestly, there's been some great suggestions, you know, made to Mr. Bishop um, over the course of, of, you know, the past several weeks. Um, and as you know, he would obviously take all of these things under advisement. So. Um, I think it's just a great opportunity to have a collaborative and open conversation about something that matters to a lot of people. Sorry, can I make one more comment? Of course. So um, the other thing I would say is uh, there, there's a former a former colleague of ours who, when I first joined the committee, was um, would always, and, and it, I always wondered about it, would very quickly refer to the school committee policy for um, School for school-related problems, and, problems concerns. and concerns. And I always, initially I was always sort of like, why do we keep going back to that? But <laughs> um, it, you brought up the social media piece. And so I, I just want to also take this opportunity to reiterate that, that the, pol the, the policy, is, it, when we reference the policy, it sounds like we're being a, a little bit strict. But the purpose is you can get the best and most relevant information by first going through the principal, going through the administrative team, um, going through the, um, you know, and then and then eventually the school committee is on that, but nowhere in that chain of events is Facebook. So again, I would just encourage people. We have a very communicative administration, I, I, I and I hope that people will continue to utilize that. Um, it, it is disappointing to hear that messages are being put out through social media that may not be accurate. And I don't. I'm not saying that people are necessarily being. Um, that, that people are doing that on purpose, but right. I think it is important to make sure that people know that I have never in my in my four years working with Dr. McLeod had a parent come to us and say that Dr. McLeod refused to meet with them. I don't know how you find the time to meet with the parents <laughs> that you do. So, um, so I do encourage people to take advantage of of the administrative team. Um, well, that sounds that doesn't know how I meant to say it, but take advantage, follow that policy, and be able to get that that communication from the sources. Right, especially as you say, after they have, you know, have respectfully um, met those other, yep. uh, and, I, and I know the parents that are here tonight have done just that, so. Yep. So, and I'll just add one final piece in addition to, I mean, obviously it's not appropriate at all for us to have personal information about any students or whatever qualifications they may or may not have for course registration, but in addition to the budget piece that we've already addressed, if there are implications down the road in terms of the program of studies, which we do um, vote on and is presented to us annually, obviously that's something that I'm sure you would include in your report, but just sort of for people who are listening. So those are sort of the pieces that the school committee has purview over, yeah. um, what's in the, in the program of studies and as well um, yep. what the budget can, can afford for or can provide for students in terms of opportunities. So just so everybody sort of knows what buckets we all are responsible for, I think would be helpful. So any other questions? Two. Yes. <laughs> Um, do, are two weeks sufficient for you to come back with some concrete options? Yes, certainly. And, and that would still give enough time for students also to yes. understand and make those choices. Right. The, the, 
choices have been made, schedules are complete, so nothing is going to happen between now and, you know, next month in that regard that, that puts pressure on this. Sure, but yeah. you feel comfortable about the two weeks from your end? Oh, yeah, certainly. It would also be interesting to have the data from the number of kids that move from honors biology into AP chemistry. Yes. I, I do know anecdotally, but I don't have the actual, that, that there are kids who do that. Yes. Yep. I would say as a parent, for sure, even though math is more sequential, science, it's very common for kids to take some, you know, some AP sciences, some non-AP sciences. They're, you don't have to, they're not necessarily prerequisites to each other in, in my experience. Right. And I've had four kids go through various tracks here. So um, that's, that's where I point back to the, maybe some misunderstandings and some yeah. clarification and some education around the process I think will be helpful to everybody. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Okay, all set. I think we can go back to our liaison list, our list of liaison roles. So you all have this in your packet. Um, but I'm, I've been writing here of ones that we have talked about adding on. Um, so I'm thinking that the most, well, you guys can tell me, but I think the most efficient way to go through this first is just to just go through the list and give a brief description and whatever we happen to know about meeting times. Um, and then that way we can go circle back and talk about availability and interest and sort of divide and conquer because this is a long list. And even though we're, there are five of us, this is a long list. <laughs> um, so just very quickly, I'll read through them. And then maybe if, if John or Nancy, if you are one of the, these liaisons, you can chime in with when they meet or what the time commitment is. Um, so chair and vice chair we took care of. Media spokesperson is typically the chair and the superintendent, so we don't need to go back to those. Um, so the ESBC, we have two members. One is a voting member and one is not a voting member. So John currently is and has been since it was set up our voting member. Um, Kelly was our non-voting member, so we will need a second person to serve on the ESBC. And when did those typically happen? So we're... We're at the point where we're about, I would say, once to maybe twice a month. Uh, largely what we're doing right now is paying bills um, because, obviously, as I updated earlier, the building is pretty I – mean, there, there are – as we discovered in the last meeting, there are minor tweaks we can make as a committee, um, but for the most part, that's that's largely what we're dealing with is paying bills. So I don't think it's a, it's a huge commitment. I actually was sitting here thinking about whether or not we necessarily even need the backup member at this point. However, um, it occurs to me that there will be a gap um, right. between the opening of, of the school and when my term wraps up. So – um, so it might not be a bad idea from that perspective. Okay. And before we leave that. I would like to continue as the voting member. I don't know if that was even, if that was a consideration. Well, but we'll see. <laughs> I know, just expressing my interest. Yes. All right. No, very good. Okay, thank you. Um, contract negotiations. Typically there are two school committee members as well as the uh, members of the administrative team. Um, this was listed as NA last year because we, it was not a negotiating year. However, this year is a negotiating year, and those typically happen during the day, during the school day. So I have a question. So as we are going through, are we also discussing interests? Or we well, what I thought it? I would do is just explain sure. what they okay. all are, and then we can go back. So you might be more interested in some than others. Um, community com communications, typically this is... Um, responding to emails that are sent to the school committee, which is usually done by the chair and or the superintendent. Um, but we could also talk about, we have had a lot of conversation in various um, arenas this year about communication, so we could certainly talk about whether or not that's some, a role that we would need to expand or maybe consider expanding for one year. Um, the minutes review is something that Nancy has done this year. So that's, so we have, um, a woman who does a fabulous job of watching our meetings and drafting the minutes and then sending them to Nancy for filling in and fact checking and um, and then they get submitted to the packet for our votes so that's typically like a couple hours a month yeah it, it's in they sometimes will come in clusters of a couple at a time so you might not have some 
for one meeting and you might have a couple for the next meeting it also includes actually taking the minutes at our um, executive, executive sessions session. because we don't those are not um, televised or recorded is the person also responsible for posting them to the website no My, um, dr. McLeod's administrative assistant says that okay yeah it's literally it's it's reviewing just what's been done and, and a lot of times there'll be questions like uh, when the student council representatives come if there's somebody who's not usually here she'll sometimes ask who that was if I don't have the name offhand I'll go back and I'll ask mr. Bishop who it was things like that um, policy review also was Nancy this year although I think we're pretty current on our policies I'm not sure we have a lot of policy work left to do we've done a lot in the last couple of years um, but certainly we need to have somebody uh, doing that the budget advisory group has typically also been um, the chair and the vice chair and the superintendent uh, and those are meetings that happen with the town manager and uh, chair of the board of selectmen and appropriations committee during the, the budget process to try to you know keep everybody up to speed about the rapidly changing budget numbers in theory in theory charter I'm proud to say we can take off this list for the next 10 years because we've done it um, the ADA committee we have had a voting member on that committee but I don't even know if they're meeting so I did it for I, did, I was not the ADA I think it was Kelly last year so I don't know I did it for two years the first year they met a lot the second year didn't hear from them. so we could either leave that open and confirm with Norman whether or not that's something that's still ongoing I'm not sure it's a sustaining committee because they had a period of time and money that they had to spend so I'm, I'm, yeah we should probably confirm with Norman because yeah, it might I be that it, they're over I did it years ago it started because there was a lawsuit against the town right. and there were a lot of ADA issues that had to get addressed and then for several years in a row there was a an ADA article but that hasn't even happened in the last couple of years at town meeting so that's why I'm not sure I have the feeling it's something that the permanent building committee is kind of just taking care of mm. um, so if we could check on that let's okay. just leave that one alone for tonight okay um, the appropriations committee that typically has been the chair as well as the board of selectmen and capital improvements um, the sustainable green committee um, hasn't met for quite some time although we all received an email today really regarding uh, from a woman who is on the sustainable green committee uh, so I don't know their meeting schedule it's not obviously a burdensome um, commitment since they they typically don't meet but there's some communications back and forth the legislators usually the chair is the point of contact for that on um, the marathon fund committee meets about once a month I think right John yeah at most yeah at most and, and that's just um you know that it's a they have a, a fund that they people make proposals because that's why it's at most because sometimes there are no proposals um, to requesting money community organizations and you get to award money that's a that's fun pretty one. fun one yeah, yeah that's an enjoyable one um, CPAC they meet monthly they do um, and we all attended their meeting last week which was great but Lori had um, been their liaison for a couple of years so that would we need a new liaison um, tech we have a voting member on the tech board um, in the last couple of years that's been Kathy but it has in prior years been a school committee member so we can talk about whether we want to go back to that or not um, and then obviously anybody is welcome to go they meet every other month on a Friday morning at like 8 15 in Walpole um, youth Commission has been Nancy this year that's about once a month as well planning board um, they meet every other week um, you don't necessarily have to go to all the meetings but following the meetings um, is helpful because anybody that drives through town sees that there are a lot of new developments which always have a huge impact on the schools so it's just good to be aware of what's happening there Irvine Todaro this is a committee that is tasked with coming up with a plan for the use of the of the second piece of land that is next to the Irvine property where the school is being built uh, so the town also purchased another piece of another parcel of land that extends from there behind to um, to water fresh farm so Nancy's been on that committee I don't know how often you meet it, in the beginning we met every month but we met earlier this week and unless there's some significant movement on the bus situation probably won't meet again until September okay and that's an evening meeting as well it is okay 
Um, the turf field subcommittee, John and I have done this here. Um, that will be a very active committee for the upcoming year, and that typically meets in the mornings, sometimes in the evenings, but most often in the mornings. Um, so, Kathy, so for new ones, Senior Center, you mentioned, which I think would I be a great idea, um, just to make sure that they're in the loop about opportunities available to them at the schools. We do have that policy um, that provides them yep. no free access yeah, to everything, no admission. Um, the Center School Reuse Committee, I don't know if you've had any communications from the town manager, but I believe there's a school committee liaison. That they want, non-voting member. Yes, mm -hmm. um, and it hasn't started yet, so we don't know the meeting schedule. We have talked about the Chamber of Commerce, and I think that you have really been our liaison to the Chamber of Commerce, although they often meet at the times that you have administrative Correct. Um, Always. meetings. So it might be best to uh, to assign that to one of us, yeah, since we do not have to go to admin council meetings. Mm -hmm. um, then I also just, uh, the enrollment and capacity um, subcommittee is on our agenda for later, but that's, um, that's something that we'll likely meet during the day, I would say, mm -hmm. right? Um, and then the final thing that I wrote on my list was just the Gasgate project. Um, Kathy and I, I happened to hear about it at a meeting up that I was at that, Ken that Senator Spilka held, and so I've been following it as has Kathy. It doesn't have to, to continue to be me, but I think it, um, it's going to be a, a critical thing to follow, so I think it would be good to designate one of us to, um, to really stay on top of that. So. Unless there are other suggestions, that should be our whole list, right? Yeah, I, I don't know if it makes sense to the school committee for that to be a combined planning board slash gas gate. I mean, I see those both those projects as both being around communication, around projects going on in town. Um, I, I don't know in terms of the steps if we would have heard about it sooner through the planning board, John. Well, that's still unclear to me, but I, I actually wondered if that was a connection, if the connection there was actually more, um, given the stage of the discussions, if that's legislators. Yeah. Because it seems like oh, okay. uh, that the Senator Spilka and Rep. Dykema are driving a lot of that conversation at this point right now. So it doesn't feel like there's, again, it's an awareness thing, but I wonder if it's more of the legislative liaison at this point okay. and we revisit if it becomes yeah. something. Yeah, and I, I did, I attended a, Board of Selectmen meeting a couple of weeks ago, um, and then this was part of the email that we received this week um, from a community member about the Gasgate. Uh, Brian Herr had mentioned setting up a, sort of a smaller committee to work, to follow this more closely and, and to work on it, and that would include somebody from the schools, um, member of the Board of Selectmen, a member of the public, the, the abutters. Um, so it was really in terms of, I should have explained that better in the first place, but it was in terms of that that I was thinking that we should pick our person, and obviously it would be Kathy as well. Um, if that's the case, I would agree. I think it probably then begs a separate person. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Jean, could you speak a little bit about, you know, you talked about the community communications and likely expanding that a little bit. And, you know, going to what Dr. McLeod was talking about, how it's disappointing to see comments being posted on Facebook. So could we look to, you know, kind of expand that a little bit, the communication aspect to see how can we encourage that the direct communication happen and it's not happening on social media or, you know, um, how can we look at other means of communication within uh, our systems? If there's an easier way and just look at various ways. And I think we had also heard from um, the CPAC uh, group that you know they have to go to various places to get some of the information. Could we have some kind of a feed of all the events that are happening, things of that nature? If we can expand that uh, a little bit to see if that would be something to explore. Yeah, I think that's fine. We could we could. Um, I mean, in the past, this is also we do actually have a school committee communications policy somewhere. Right. Um, right. Which right. probably we could probably take a look at that and update it. But in addition, in the past, that person has just taken a, a little while to go through all the website p 
pages and make sure things are still current and just kind of give a fresh set of eyes as well. And I think it sort of feels like, like we're leading towards maybe we need a community calendar of events that is easily accessible so people know, like, I miss the Pops concert or the art show or all, all of those, all the plays that we have in addition to the sports. I mean, there's so many opportunities to come and check out what the students are doing at every level um, that it's hard to keep up with. And so maybe if we can focus that in a more centralized place that's not the overwhelming school calendar that also has, like, reading day or I don't know things that aren't relevant to, to everybody night. back to school night um, so yeah I mean I think if you all are in agreement we could we could talk about flushing out the communications role um, for this year and and seeing okay. what we can do with that so okay so that's a long list um, I guess I don't know what's what's the easiest way to start is there does anybody not have avail availability at all during the day like I know you're a teacher Jenna I don't know what your schedule is I am but I do have um, because I, I I'm only half time I have some day time availability okay yeah okay um, so are there any I don't know what's the best way to do this are there any that are particularly interesting I mean I do think if it's all right with everybody I, I, it's my preference to leave John as the voting member on ESBC he's been there from the Makes beginning sense. Yeah. Um, absolutely but I do think we should add a second person. There'll be some transition um, toward the end of the project that will be necessary. And always good if, if John's not able to make the meeting just to have a second person there in addition to Kathy. So is there anybody? I, we mentioned this. Those meetings are typically evening meetings. Evening? Yeah. Evening. yeah. Okay. Is there anybody that's interested in the building committee? They had a pig roast. That was pretty <laughs> good. They, we did have a pig roast. I well, forgot to mention that. Yeah. Yeah. That changes things. I, know. I, I am interested in the building committee. So, um, so if you want to put me on, if anyone has any. Unless you have the yeah. pig roast. Yeah, well, the pig roast sealed the deal for me. <laughs> but so even weird. before you said that, <laughs> no, I was, no, no. yeah, I would love to be the, the, the non voting. Yeah. Okay. Got it. That works for me. All right. Um, contract negotiations. I did this the last time, there, uh, Lori and I did it the last time. I think it might be helpful in terms of consistency if I do it, but obviously if one other person, one other person needs to, to do it with us. Um, and it's not scary. Our attorney is there, and it's, a, it's actually a very formalized process. Um, so it, it's, it's, you can do it. It's not hard. Um, it's long, but it's not hard, and it's during the day. So I don't know if there's somebody that's interested in in that I would be interested in that if go, go right ahead Unless, are you, but even if you're John, not a you member you can join and listen into the conversation right no because then there would be a quorum of us and we would have to post the meeting okay. um, so only two of us can attend however we come back in executive session and give updates to the rest of the school committee so the entire school committee is involved in the decision making process and the voting but in terms of just attending those specific meetings there only ever can be two of us at any of these things otherwise it's a public meeting that we have to post under the open meeting law so um so sorry no <laughs> okay. but having said that jean just to add if there were a meeting not negotiations but in in many of these other examples that people there was a topic that people were compelled to want to be there we can post right yep. so we're not saying oh if you're not the liaison you don't get to go for right. example cpac cpac's a good example right um, we would have a liaison, and uh, but if others wanted to attend and made the, the liaison aware of it, then we could always post the meeting. Right. Yep. With contract negotiations, it's a little bit different. Yep. It's because we actually are in executive session when we do it. Um, okay. So at any rate. And that's not the case for the building committee. No. 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 no okay. Building okay. committee is an open. Uh, building it's committee a is a posted meeting public meeting anyway. anyway. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So community communications, um, I think it makes sense for me to continue to respond to public comment that kind of emails that come in. But um, if there's somebody that's interested in sort of taking a broader look at, I don't know, I, I'm not coming up with a good verb, but sort of not standardizing, but sifting through our, our current myriad of communication opportunities and clarifying them a little bit or streamlining them a little bit, that would be great. I'd like to help out in that. Okay. 
So Jean, I wrote that down on here as communications slash community calendar. We don't have to put community calendar because it's different from community communications, right? How do you want to clarify the difference between those two roles? Well, why don't you just, instead of calling the chair the media spokesperson, just say the committee spokesperson, and I think that covers media as well as emails that are received, and then you can just take me off communica community communications. That's, that works. That could be Mina. Um, does that work for everybody? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Minutes review? I can do it, unless someone else wants to do it. John, do you want to do it? I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> John has had the pleasure of that job before. It's not typically one people come back for. No, I, I really want to do it. Oh, bless you. Okay. Talk to you in January. Nobody's going to arm wrestle no. Mina for that. I'm like that. Sometimes I like this mundane task and just go through the details and stuff. And it's yours. Somebody has to take I'll it sit off. Down with you. I'll, I'll sit down with you yeah. and show you what I've done process-wise, and I will finish out. If it's easier, I'll finish out until you're back from your trip. Um, yeah, that's probably Sounds not fair good. if she's in India to have to do it. Yes. Okay. Offshore the job. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> policy review. I don't think we're going to have a lot this year, but it's super fun because you get to work with Dr. McLeod and or Dr. Kavanaugh. Mm -hmm. Super fun. It is. We have snacks. <laughs> no pigs, though. <laughs> I want my pig roast. I mean, if I you want a pig roast, I'm going to be really snacks. Snacks. Yeah, snacks. Snacks. It's more like nuts. Uh, nuts. I will, well, like I, I will say about that is I'm happy to do it again, but I, I did find coming on for my first year, it was a good way to learn yeah. about that. So I would offer that to you guys first if you want to okay. take that. I'm happy to, because you've got the minutes. Like yes, work intensive. Good. So yes, absolutely. That'd okay, so Jen will do that. Yeah. Spending several hours reading them already over the past few weeks. Yeah. It'll, it's, be, it's, good to, it's, it'll it's, be good to, it'll be good to, you know, well, sort of digest. There is a, a quiz bit. usually too. Just we haven't scheduled yet. There's a quiz. You have to know them by letter and policy. All right. Well, I, step one, check. <laughs> and again, also just for this, is sort of similar to the the negotiations. It, I mean, policy is the purview of all of us. So this right. is just the person who who works with Dr. McLeod and Dr. Cavanaugh to sort of put together the first draft right. that then comes to the full committee for review. So it's not as if we're not all involved in policy. Exactly. And That's they are yeah. all That's under right. review at the moment. No. Yeah, OK. No. Yeah. No. Right. Starting no. in August, there's we're a handful. every okay. single policy. Most of them will take up this summer. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah. And then sometimes, you know, laws will change or whatever we yeah, need to update. But change. they all do go through usually three readings. Too, okay. so with the full committee but yeah John's right that was that was a great clarification this is just preparing it to come for the first time to the, to the school committee and I'm happy to pass along to you where I found the cheats to get in to figure out thank you both in looking at policies from other schools and from the Massachusetts school committee perfect to, in addition to ours so. all right yeah, we try to copy off other people's homework if we can to start to start with, yeah, you um, don't need to and then we the and then we can tailor it to our particular needs. But Next we don't have to time. reinvent the wheel. Um, so budget advisory group, I think, should be me and Nancy, um, and Kathy, okay. and Carol. You know, if you really want to spend some time with budget, you're always welcome. Again, good snack. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> Um, okay, the char the ADA committee. I would say let's hold off and see yeah, if that's actually a meeting for Norman. anymore. Appropriations and board of selectmen and capital improvements. I can take care of the sustainable green committee. Um, I mean, we can appoint somebody as our point of contact for the one woman who seems to still be trying to keep that committee together and going. Um, I, know I mean, that I, was I have voting member on here. Is that I what know, you have? but yes, but they haven't met, so there oh. hasn't been a meeting. Oh to vote on to yeah. yeah anything to vote on so um have they turned into something else gene like the um no the they haven't morphed into a different no, no it you know it was one of those things that the chair the chair's term expired and just kind of Fizzled. was the yes exactly um i mean they have done great things in the past they organized it like a community-wide cleanup day they did the trucks with the shredding and I mean, they really have done some great things. They were really involved in the solar discussion early on. Um, so, you know, it may it may heat up again, but it just has been pretty quiet. Um, if, if it, I would suggest if it does heat up again that perhaps we should ask them to revisit whether we need to have a voting member yeah. on there. I mean, it doesn't, because those are great projects, you're right, but I, it doesn't not, necessarily yeah. seem to rise to the level that we need to have a voting member of the school committee. 
Yeah, I agree. Um, why don't we figure out who is willing to be the liaison, and then when we communicate that to town hall, just also express that it's our preference that it no longer be a voting member because we don't think that's necessary. Um, although up. that's up to the board of select, they set the charge, right. but it would be great if they would okay. change that. So, is there somebody that's interested in the sustainable green committee? Yeah, I'll, I'm interested if anybody. Okay. I mean, if they do get it get going again, I'm, yep. I'm interested. Okay, I'll Excellent. find out. Okay. Um, so, legislators, I can take, and then the marathon fund committee. Jean, before you yes. move on, legislators, that's where we agreed that we were going to put Eversource. As opposed to calling it it out as a separate role. Yeah. Why don't we? Unless that small group is formed that Mr. Hur talked about, but. Yeah. Although, I mean, unless somebody else is interested, I'd be. I would actually really like to continue on with that. So maybe we don't have to go to the level of creating a separate liaison role. Um, Makes sense. Okay. So that would be you and me. Yes. Okay. Um, so marathon fund committee. I'm happy to do it again, but I, just as I said, it's it's a, it's a fun one, but it's not. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Do you get free tickets to the to uh, the if, start? If I do, nobody told me. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to get some interest going here, John. For oh, it's a fun one. We oh, get to like give it. out. I like it. We give okay, out scholarships. No, 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 and, uh, do they meet? It's once a, again. It's once a month at most, but it's it, again if if they don't have a proposal to review, then they don't meet. Um, so CPAC, I would like to take that. Is that okay? Does that work for everybody? Yeah, absolutely. I think it meets their request of having somebody who could be consistent for a couple, years, a couple too. years. Yeah. 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 Excellent. Um, and again, that those are all public meetings. Any yep. or all of us can always attend, but um, it's great for them to have a particular point of um, contact. So tech. Um, so just so you don't feel like you're pushing me out, I had expressed um, to members of the school committee that I've done this. Um, is it okay if I'm commenting on this right now? Sure. Um, I've sat on the board of both tech and except for the past three years. Um, as part of my goals as, as superintendent, um, I'm also, there's also a tech superintendents group that I also attend, um, which has been incre uh, just a great support network. Um, and I feel that that is something that, you, you know, it, that is something that is very well functioning and to be on the boards for both of those collaboratives is a lot as well as the superintendent. So um, I'm happy, happy to step down unless you all vote otherwise. But I didn't want you to think that you were pushing me out if one of you would be really wanting to be a voting member. So I should state that. I will just put in a plug. I, I was this liaison for years, and it has been so helpful to me in terms of learning about school committees in general. It's uh, it, They only meet every other month. and. Um, so tech is one of our collaboratives, which is where we get a lot of our special education resources. They do a lot of professional development. They do these job alike groups for assistant to superintendents, superintendents. Um, but at the end of the board meeting, they have a job alike group for school committee members. And that's where I have found just such great resources and other school committee members across um, our, our peer districts. So I really highly recommend I mean, I'm happy to do it again, but I've done it for probably seven of my nine years, so I'm happy to have somebody else do it. But they, like I said, they meet eight, at 8.15 in Walpole on Friday mornings every other month. I'd like to go. Okay. Um, youth Commission. Nancy did that this, I don't, when do they meet? Wednesday nights? They meet two, uh, I think the third Tuesday of the Tuesday month. Tuesday nights? And not typically, I think, over the summer. Okay. I know Tuesdays do not work for me. I'd, I'd be interested in that one. If. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, planning board. I'm sorry, that was you, John? That was John. Yep. Planning board. So this is really, these are televised, so you could watch and not attend. It's really mostly monitoring their agendas and keeping tabs on when there are 
big new developments um, coming online. Not that we necessarily can sway or affect that, but we need to prepare yeah, <laughs> for it and haven't always been in the loop. Um, I, I would suggest, too, that one of the things that has necessitated this role in the past has been inconsistent communication. Um, and so while it might make sense to have a liaison, given some of the changes that have occurred recently on the planning board, this also just might be a really good opportunity to establish a, a more formalized communication, well, reestablish, because right. I'm pretty sure there's a policy, a more formalized communication channel so that we as a committee, because really this role becomes about watching the planning board and making sure there's nothing that we think could end up adding kids to the school system, which are things that I believe by town policy they're supposed to notify us of anyway. Right. And so it might, it, that may be a way to solve and not need this liaison. Um, yeah. so. uh, I thought that you, know, you also hear a lot of other things that may be happening, like they were talking about the water tank. Yes. Right. right. So, yeah. um, and I think you had also proposed a capacity yep. um, subcommittee. So would it make sense for someone who's there on, the subcommittee for the capacity also be the liaison on the planning board, so kind of hearing that's, you. That's probably a logical. Yeah, connection. I mean, that's a, yeah, there, there would be value in that in that connection. Again, understanding. I mean, if theoretically, again, if they're reporting to us all of the proposed developments, we'll have that data as right. a committee. Right. Um, so, I mean, it might make sense to still have a liaison. I just, I, regardless, I still think that there's an opportunity to reestablish that so that right, we can right. have better channels of communication so that right. it's really a liaison and not trying to chase everything down. Well, and Dr. McLeod has done a great job of inviting them to come and speak to us pretty much annually since she's been here to give us, all five of us, an update, um, which I think has really been helpful. But I'm also as I'm listening to this thinking, you know, sometimes this affects like bus route planning and all of that stuff when we know things are coming online or about when they are coming online and that kind of thing. Because I think this year we had to start picking kids up Muse. at the Hopkinton Muse in the middle of the year. Mm -hmm. So that involved either an additional bus or change of bus routes. And so that was a little bit complicated. Um, so I take your point about having it, having one person be on the planning board uh, liaison as well as um, at least one if we have two of the enrollment and capacity subcommittee. So um, does it make sense to postpone that until we talk about that committee? Why don't we do that? Sure. Okay. okay. Um, Irvine Todaro. I'd like to keep that. Okay. Consistency is a good thing for that one. Yeah. Um, turf field. Um, I, you know. I'd like to keep going with it. I would too. Yeah. Um, Seems like consistency is good for that group. I think so, except that both of us are th in the third of our three-year terms. Well, so maybe as it gets f closer to the end of the year, it would make sense to invite somebody yeah. to join you to kind of piggyback on if needed. Yeah. Yeah, because I think you're right, but the, the sort of the big Hopefully bogey be occurs before our before the end of that term in right. terms of town meeting and the, uh, so. Mm -hmm. Um, we can at least see it through that process. Yes. And you're both voting members, right, on that yes. one? Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and I think you said it's one of those meetings where anybody can go. Oh, it's, an, oh, it's a public right. meeting. Mm -hmm. yep. so, mm -hmm. so I think to your point, yep. if you do decide not to run, then, you know, someone can start shadowing. Or if people early. don't vote for us. <laughs> 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 Happens. We're just starting. Um, Come on. It's a long way away. <laughs> it's another year's problem. Okay, so that, that sounds good. So we'll continue. Um, so adding a senior center liaison. Yes, I want to be that one. Um, center school reuse. Did you want to do that one, Jean? I just said um, senior center. Did you get that one? I'm sorry. And Mina raised have a her different hand. Order. Yes. That's okay. It's Thank my you, Mina. favorite place. Okay, <laughs> we got you then. Um, you got it. Yes, center school reuse. Um, Makes me sad. Uh, I'll volunteer for that one if there isn't a huge interest. I know. Sure. Inquire on snacks first. Yes. It's not even formed yet. Yeah. I know. I'm giving off the wrong vibe here, I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. You got policy. Yeah. That's right. Yes. Um, so, Chamber of Commerce. 
That is a really interesting role. And um, again, it, it's simply because of the conflict. They meet Tuesday mornings, as does admin council. And the principals already are planning next. They've, they've actually, one of the principals told me today that she has scheduled her PLCs around having Tuesday mornings open. So this is something that's just been, a, you know, and, but it's super interesting. Um, there's very interesting people that, that come to the chamber meetings. They're doing all sorts of things. I learned a lot being on the chamber um, because of just that's another whole side of, of what's going on in town that I don't necessarily had, wasn't necessarily aware of. So um, I and think. Do they meet every, once a month or twice a month or what is that? They meet once a month at, the ex at 8 o'clock on mornings. Tuesday mornings. Yeah. I would take that if, if the rest of you are not. Sounds good. Inclined. Okay, and then um, and then enrollment and capacity. The one other thought that I have, and I don't know if it really rises to the level of a liaison, but as we're talking about this, the marathon school and the center school reuse, I really think it's important that we have some kind of a, a formal opportunity to say goodbye to the center school mm -hmm. and thank it for its loyal service to this town. We got much more out of it than I think anybody anticipated and there's so much emotion connected to it. So I don't know if that's something that ESPC is naturally doing. I think their focus is really more on opening the new school, but I feel like there's got to be... Um, I, I would also say th that... I think that's something that probably should live within the school committee and the district more than the ESBC. Yeah, that's fine. But I think, yeah. but I want to make sure that we are thoughtful about that and we don't wait until the last minute and go, uh oh. Oh, I completely agree with that. Decommission yeah. it in a meaningful yeah. way. Yes, exactly, exactly. So that's actually something I would love to do unless other people are dying to, to do that. I, what I are mean, we calling that? To do which, what is oh, to goodbye? Center school. The, 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 and is to be on the center school. How about, how about, well? do how about de instead? decommissioning the center school? Center the center school, school the center celebration. School reuse, Closing celebration. Celebration of center school. There you go. Yeah. Closing celebration. I mean, Lauren and I are all <laughs> over it. Okay. Celebrating center school committee. How about oh, that? Oh, that's, I'm going to put that on my resume. C's. And we got, I know. Well, I don't, I didn't put committee. Celebrating Center School. Okay. And then Jean's on that. Okay, so that's great. I think we did it. Well, we didn't with do with a few exceptions. We're we're come we'll back. do that come later. Back, yeah. And that will and then that was the overlap other with planning, planning board. board. Got it. Okay. okay. All right. So now, of course, I'm always famous for being way late on um, agendas and I'm not starting off well. So we'll try to keep we'll try to catch up a little bit. <laughs> Your pay is zero. I know. Should she didn't we hear you? No. I said you this? didn't tell us that before we voted for you for chair. <laughs> you know, I'm new and I wasn't aware. <laughs> I know, but you can see 8:30 on the and 9 o'clock on the clock. Okay. So, um, do we need? We don't need to vote on these. No. Okay. All right. So, summer meeting dates. Well, one of them uh, to make things easy. So Ralph is asking to have Thursday, July 13th. And I think he's asking because he wants to be able to be there. Okay. And I think he's already looking at his July. You're both looking at me saying that's not going to work, right? No, oh. I'm looking at you thinking this is a reality. I know. <laughs> that's... I know. So if it works for the school committee, he's asking if you would consider the 13th. Having said that, we don't always meet at 7 o'clock at night in the summer. Mm -hmm. There have been times when we've met during the day. Um, or even at least earlier. Mm -hmm. So, and, and for some of you, that might mean that's even worse. So we should think about date as well as time. I'm actually out of town that week. Okay, well, that's I, not going to I could come back if that's, oh, okay. if that's the only day that works for everybody else. But um, yeah. is the 6th all right for him? Or is there... I mean, you, it's your meeting, too so soon? We'll, why don't you tell me what works for you, and then we'll work with him. What do we have to so is the question of is the sixth okay for him? I the mean, is this I don't is this, he's gotta close the year, right? He's gotta close the year. So that's and why I'm wondering is he gonna be able to six that's might be too, too soon. soon. That's the thing. It only gives him five days. I mean really. the, we only usually meet once in July, so we could yeah. meet on the twentieth of or I mean yeah, that whole week is is he still here? He's here like part part of the of the week okay. during those weeks. Um Carol and I are at, at MASS, uh, that third on the 19th and 20th. 
What I'm about keep. the 17th or 18th? We don't have to meet yeah, on Thursday. That's perfect. Shake it up a little bit. 17th, yeah. The 17th that, or 18th? That works for me. Yeah. Okay, do you want to just... Okay. Is it, okay, so... Which? Which one? Do you want to confirm with Ralph, or does um, it matter for him? I mean, I think if I give him enough notice, he can work around it. But okay. probably he would prefer Tuesday over Monday. Okay, okay, okay. so let's uh, do yes. July 18th. I would say yes. Semi-retired Ralph. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 18th, do you have a preferred time? I know when you um, have young kids, 5 o'clock is not a great time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we can make it. It's one day. We can make it work. If you want to go earlier, that's fine. Whatever you... With enough notice, I'm fine. Okay. okay. You want to do six? Six is perfect. So it's a little bit earlier, but not. Okay. Okay. Great. Okay. I think I mentioned to a few of you, would this be a good time to talk about my travel? Yes. Um, so I, I need to travel and visit my mother, and uh, I haven't seen her in a year. Mm. And so. Um, it might be, if she agrees and her health permits, we might travel back early. It might be a few weeks. If not, it will be the entire summer. But I do intend to dial in to all the meetings, and I'll continue to access my emails and respond and whatnot. So I guess, um, you know, in case I am in India um, on July 18th, um, 6 p.m., what time is that? That's middle of the night. It's 3.30 in, it's in the morning. In yeah. the morning. Okay. Oh, come on. Oh. I think it's okay to not dial in at yeah. 3.30 in the morning. Oh. So, so, if I'm half hour late, would that be okay? Yes. <laughs> well, for that reason, should we just keep it 7 o'clock? We can do 7 o'clock, yeah. sure. I, I don't want Make it, it 4.30. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't That's want it to be the day. Uh, constraining factor here. But no. uh, it seems absurd to it imagine does. you'd yep. wake up for 3.30 it or 4 It would be like a snow day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you for accommodating. So 7? Seven. 7, sure. Ready? Okay. And then we need just one, one in August? One for August, yeah. Okay. So may I ask, do we meet on the regularly, like the first and the third Thursdays in July? Okay. No. Okay. So that will be our only July meeting. We will be meeting um, twice more in June, though, the 8th and the 22nd. Yep. Correct. Okay. So then we need an August meeting. Yep. Should we make it, try to make it a month? That makes sense. So what, what would that one, be, like two, the 17th? Although, it would be the 15th. We have a retreat, but we'd be back for the evening. The 15th, or I mean. Do we want to move, move it back to Thursday at that point? Or 17th? Tuesday, or Are you still it doesn't matter to me. Um, retreat? Yeah. No, is that good? Yeah. Okay, so we'll say August 17th at 7 p.m. Okay. Mm -hmm. You better um, walk off your week vacation. And we I typically, know, bad, isn't typically it? those, our summer meetings typically are not televised, and we usually have them in the administrative conference room and the administrative offices so don't come right. looking for us here so still public That's meetings but just not yes <laughs> yes okay what, what did we put the answer so you will not find us in the high school at that time okay did i'm sorry did we say seven or six seven seven, seven o'clock so july 18th and august 17th both at seven o'clock in the central office it would have been smart for me to put it on the yeah. phone. Yeah. We'll work to get you in and I can't even invite you. But we need to take, get that taken we'll care of tomorrow. Yeah, I don't know why. Yeah. No, we'll get Mike to come over. Very official. There's a mailbox over there, too. Oh, really? You will. I can check my So we said Okay, thank you. Okay. All right. So now we are on the District Enrollment and Capacity Subcommittee. Dr. McLeod. Thank you. If you if you don't mind, I wanted to... Just get the school committee's opinion on um, the most efficient way for us to do this work. So we know, you know, we've gathered a lot of information. We want to look, and I want to clarify that we want to look at capacity enrollment over our grades two through five buildings. Obviously, our our K one building is not even going to be looked at. There's no, there's nothing there, um, but. When this was done last, um, it was called the Elementary Parity Task Force. And they were looking at, basically it was made up of principals, parents, and teachers. Um, there were, there were at-large members from the community, um, and then members from each of the three elementary schools, both administrative and, and teachers, um, and parents from school councils. 
And what occurred to me is that it might be useful to the school committee for that, for a group which I would consider a task force, to first collect the information to bring to you. So it would be a presentation. We would work to uh, gather information, um, collect questions from the community, questions from the school committee, bring it back to you, and then form an advisory committee. It feels, it just feels like it would be more efficient, um, I, I, you know, in terms of the posting and the all of those things, but working around, I want to get going on this, um, and working around teacher and administrator's time between now and September can be challenging. Um, and it, it was interesting because most of the parents that served, it was, in, we had a, a, well, at the time we called it speak, but we had a CPAC parent, which of course we would want to have. And then the other parents, one from Hopkins and one from Elmwood and, and one from, we had an HPTA VP and then we had school council members. Um, so I like the makeup of the, the, the task force that they had. There were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 13, it looked like they were also an advisory to the superintendent because the superintendent was also not on the committee, but I would like to suggest to the school committee that I chair this committee. Um, I'm already very involved in all of this and, as you know, feel very strongly and passionately about it. Um, so I would love to chair the committee um, and then work with the two elementary principals, parents and teachers from within their buildings. Um, members of making sure that we include members of SPEAK and, and HPTA. So I put that out as an option. Um, the other way to go with this is to basically have a very similar makeup but include school committee members from the very beginning and have it as an advisory committee to the school committee, um, much as the calendar. comparison would be the, the calendar, calendar committee. Mm -hmm. But also don't we run, not turf? Is TURF an advisory it's committee? It's a subcommittee. Yeah. It's a subcommittee. Oh, it's a subcommittee, right. It's a subcommittee. Right. Yeah. We did reach out to our lawyer friends, <laughs> and we did find out that even if there is one um, school committee member, we have to define it as a subcommittee. It is considered, yes, it's considered to be um, a committee created by one person to do a job that person could have done himself or herself. For example, when the superintendent who has the power to choose a principal convenes a committee to advise him or her, that subcommittee is not subject to the OML. Um, bodies appointed by a public official solely for the purpose of advising the official on a decision that individual could make alone are not public bodies subject to OML. Um, but the question about participation to the numbers of school committee members, um, if the people on the committee were appointed by the school committee, so anybody on the committee, this frequently happens with search committees and building committees mm -hmm. where the governing board establishes a committee made up mostly or even exclusively of non-committee members, then, um, then it would have to be a subcommittee. So it's, it's up so, to you. Sorry, I feel like I'm jumping in first every time, but I'm, I'm going I'm to do it anyway. Um, <laughs> the, um, so, we, but, so that seems to indicate that, so if we go the advisory route, you're just sort of taking that ball because even if we even if we appoint people it becomes a subcommittee right yes right so yes I'm not saying I'm opposed to it I'm just clarifying right I don't know that you would have to appoint I think on tonight's agenda we wanted to look at the makeup of the committee and talk about the potential makeup which is you mm -hmm. know why I mentioned who was on the committee before it looks like it was a really good makeup um, in terms of having input from various stakeholders um, so you wouldn't necessarily have to appoint them. So, and it seems like we have a couple of options which don't necessarily preclude each other. We could start with a task force that you lead and or, or, or an advisory or whatever you want to call it that does not include anybody from the school committee but then comes back to make a recommendation to the school committee and at that point we can consider whether or not we want to have to, to broaden it or yeah. refine it or send it in a different direction and create a subcommittee for that reason. And I don't anticipate that it would get to recommendation. Right. I think it would be a fact-finding group that would provide a presentation on here's what we know about capacity, about enrollment, about some potential thinking out of the box options that might work yep. over the long term within this district, but not necessarily making a recommendation because, you know, I, I think that would be more your your job. Yeah. And by capacity, are you looking at not just the building as it stands today, but the ability for buildings to be a, 
uh, down the road if they needed to be ex expanded upon my understanding of Hopkins, for example, right. if there were some wetlands that would Right. So, Nancy, that's a really good point that, that should be raised here. It's completely in line with the, um, with the SOI submitted to the MSBA. The very first question, one of the very first questions that they're going to ask is, is, what, is the, what is the educational program for the building? Okay. So they're going to want to know grades, enrollment, numbers. That's part of the initial feasibility phase, like from the very beginning. And that's why this felt timely to have that conversation before we get invited into the MSBA um, timeline so that we've, we're feeling like we know what. And we, we've discussed openly within the community, you know, every step along the way. I think it brings up a good point. Nancy brings up a good point in asking that question, though, which is that I, I think where I'm circling around this is I, I, I like the idea of the task force just because I think of this, the speed and, and uh, agility with which they can gather a lot of that information, you know, to utilizing expertise, not being bound by some of the, the subcommittee processes. Um, I guess where I want to make sure we have clarity is on sort of the definition of the problem that mm. we're trying to solve. And I think that's where I, I, I want to be, be before we sort of launch into the task force. So uh, as an example, the questions that were popping into my head were similar to Nancy's in terms of what's the scope here? Mm -hmm. What are we talking about? And then I included in that scope is not just of the physical plant of the buildings, but you mentioned we're talking about Elmwood, the, the Elmwood and Hopkins specifically. Is this something that we are restricting to just elementary, or is this something that we should be including the the middle school and, and even school. the high school in, in the discussion? Um, so those and I'm, are, I'm not suggest. I just I want to make sure before we do either of these that we've got a really tightly defined yeah. problem we're trying to solve. Right. And I'm wondering, has any? I mean, it's not a necessarily new problem, right? It's been going on for a couple of years. Looking ahead, right? So is this, has there ha anything already started to happen as far as gathering information? Oh, on yeah. This? We have. I a, mean, you we must have, have. We like, have a lot of information. Right. Okay, um, good. And we have statistics. Yeah. Um, we right. have a. Uh, 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 group that we work with that actually we contract with every year, NESDEC, who provides us with projections. We've been working with them for years. Okay. I have a lot of information that, that have, has already been gathered. We've looked at capacity across uh, all of our buildings um, for the long range. But the questions you raised, John, have not been answered. And I think that maybe the preliminary question for the school committee for the task force is to gather the information and frame the problem. Yeah, I think I think that's important just because I think we we don't know. Yeah, I don't think we, I bet if you pulled the five of us in the, this committee, we'd have five different versions of what yeah. good looks like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a good point. I mean, I think the question of the Elmwood SOI is sort of what prompted the conversation. But um, but I, I, I agree with you. I think it's only smart to take a broader look at the entire district as part of um, not that it has to be all narrowly you know, focused in design, but to just have the big picture of what what we have available to us over the next however many years um, is a good one. So it sounds like we're going in the direction of having Dr. McLeod lead whatever you want to call it, a task um, force. Task force, I think, is a good idea, or a capacity task force, we'll call it. Uh, or yeah. Enrollment. What did I write down? I wrote... Um, Elementary, well, I wrote elementary, but we could just say enrollment and capacity task force. Yeah. Um, and then do you want, so refresh me on what you just read. Do we need to vote on the makeup of that? Or if um, we do, then it becomes a public committee. Correct. And we should let you create the committee that you feel will give us the best information. Mm -hmm. You'll make your presentation, Initially, and then we'll make a decision about going forward from there. I think that makes sense. And then depending on what the recommendation is, then different people would no longer be required to be on the committee. For example, initially we'll include secondary folks, but if that is found to be not neither, either not necessary or feasible, um, then we would be able to very quickly get to, a, 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 a I think, a more directed problem which would help us to move forward yeah so if you're good with that then my goal would be to come back in September having right. done that work okay so it sounds like if that's comfortable to everybody it sounds like I'm looking for a motion 
to uh, direct the superintendent to create an enrollment and capacity task force with the goal of reporting back to the school committee in September. So moved. Second. Okay, okay. motion by Mrs. Cavanaugh, second by Mr. Graziano. All in favor? Yes. 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 Any opposed or abstained? Okay, so that's unanimous, and you have your marching orders. Thank you. And a lot of fun work to do over the summer. I do. Yeah, I do like this work. That's awesome. Okay. Um, I will say that we need to sort of take a step back to the liaison role conversation, and we should just pick somebody to monitor the planning board because we're going to – Yeah, this has gone in a different direction, I think. Okay. So is there somebody that has interest in, um, in being the planning board liaison? I can do it. I know. I've done it before. I can do it. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. So now, if I could find planning board on my list, here we go. So now we can move ahead to accept board of directors, Dr. McLeod. I'm I'm pausing because I'm trying to explain how how different the two collaboratives are. Mm -hmm. um, the tech board is made up, I would say, pretty pretty much half and half of superintendents and um, school committee members. The tech board, the accept board, is all superintendents. Um, and I don't know if th that's their bylaws and it's I a think requirement. It is. Okay. We've never it, been invited. Already then, yeah. there's the answer. Ever. I did look um, on their website. Yeah, you only did? superintendents. Yeah, have. yeah. yeah. Um, they're going through a lot of changes. Um, it's it's a board that um, I think it's really important that I remain active in. Um, I know, Mina, you know, you were asking about, you know, the things that we, we take away from, from our work. And I think one of the things that we take away from working with both of our collaboratives is what a great job we do in this district of meeting the needs of kids. I mean, the needs of kids with significant um, special education needs so that they don't have to go outside of our district. Um, and we know that there are students whose needs we can't meet. Um, and we do have two wonderful collaboratives. There's a challenge, um, and you will see you're going, right, Jen, to – no, Mina, you're going to Tech. Tech, yes. It, it's a hike. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's a beautiful facility, but it, it's a hike to get there. Yeah, well. um, and so I think it – well, that clarifies it right there, is that, um, that I would continue to be representing the school committee. Um, and the district as um, a member of the Board of Directors for Accept. They require a vote um, in your minutes so that I can provide that to them in their next meeting. So that's why it's here tonight. Okay. And Megan did uh, share the annual report with us. Oh, I gave and it to you. Right. And, it, and was, I, it was amazing. It was very helpful yeah. to know, uh, you know, all the good work that goes on. It's amazing to know that something like that exists and you know, all the towns can collaborate, yeah. and not, and nobody is ha having to do it individually, right? And to have that place and that facility, and the, yeah, that's and the accept is also moving into a new facility. Oh, as exciting! Well. Yeah, so there'll there'll be a big invite this summer, ribbon conning and everything, but oh, they're right. they're very excited about that. That's great. Um, okay, so I think it seems like I need a motion to appoint Dr. Kathy McLeod to the accept board of directors for the 2017-2018 school year. So moved. Okay, second. second. Uh, so uh, motion by Mr. Graziano, second by Mrs. Cavanaugh. All in favor? Yes. 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 Any opposed or abstained? So that passes unanimously. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, so the tech voting member this also we do need to vote and submit it to them for their um, according to their bylaws. So since we have already decided this, I just need a motion to appoint Mina Barath as the voting member for Tech for the 2017-2018 school year. So moved. So motion by Mr. Graziano and a second. Second. Can we have a discussion? Yes. I had thought, yes. I thought it was um, Dr. Dr. Kavanaugh, Kavanaugh was going to be the voting, was the voting member. member. She was going to be the second I'm so member. glad that you brought that up. I, oh, I, I, I did, I did fill her in. So Jean brought to my attention that a requirement of tech is that it be either the superintendent or a school, or a school committee member. member. Oh, According their bylaws, to their bylaws, yeah. Um, although okay. they would be very lucky to have Dr. Kavanaugh on their board of directors. I don't qualify. You do not qualify, <laughs> okay. believe it or not. Squad goals, that's what my kids say, though. Something to aim for. <laughs> <laughs> um, but she, you did go to their pl their strategic planning meeting. I did. Last, and interestingly, they asked me to vote so that I could be part of a quorum. 
Okay. Oh, no. Well, we won't tell. Yeah, we won't tell. They're not as um, clear on their own bylaws. So, <laughs> sorry, yeah, I blew right past One that. more point of discussion. We've typically had two people going. Are you going to continue to go? You're going to continue to go even the, as the non-voting member? I would like to. Okay, sure. There we just, go. Mm -hmm. so I just sure want to ask that, do you think that I'm qualified to be a voting member? Yes. 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 Okay. You will get the packet in advance. You mm -hmm. will get the packet in advance. Okay. Any questions? They have a really wonderful chair who is a school committee member. She's amazing. A long standing school committee member. Okay. Any questions that you have prior to the meeting, um, you would just, you know, ask her in advance. Um, and so you will feel very comfortable with this group. And it's just a lot of accepting reports. It's yeah. not like deciding the future of. Yes, yeah, so special and that's why I'm asking yeah, that it, I'm going in new and yeah. I don't want to be, uh, you know, I need to be fully aware and, um, yeah, they have a wonderful, they have a so wonderful fine. director, very, very, just fabulous director, a wonderful, uh, finance director, a wonderful special education co program coordinator. They, they just, they got it together. They're doing fabulous things for kids. And I'm sure I'll rely on Dr. Cavanaugh's, yeah. uh, We'll go together. She can whisper in your ear. Yes. Yeah, okay, for sure. I just won't vote. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so now I'm looking for a motion to appoint Mina Barath as our voting member for the Tech um, Collaborative Board for the 2017-2018 school school year. So moved again. <laughs> motion by Mr. Graziano on a second. Sure, so seconded again. Okay. And oh, yeah, because we did do that and then we had discussion. <laughs> it's Sorry. Okay. This is what happens when Who it gets members, after 9 o'clock. Yeah, yeah. we're important. learning. It reps. All right. All in favor? Yes. 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 Any opposed? And abstain. So that is unanimous, and congratulations, and thank you, Mina. Thank you. Okay, so the school physician's contract, Dr. McLeod. This is standard practice um, that this school physician who has, Dr. Stephanie Boder, who's been just a wonderful addition, I believe she began last year. Yeah, I think so. Um, she's just been such a great resource to us, and um, we typically offer them the same increase that we have negotiated um, and, and that we have provided to our administrative team. Um, so the request or the consideration is that the school committee vote or, or approve a 2.5% increase um, and renew her contract for 2017-18. Any questions? Okay, so then I am seeking a motion to approve the school physician's contract for the 2017-2018 school year, which will include a 2.5% increase. So moved. Sure. And a second. Second. Okay, so a motion by Ms. Devlin, a second by Mr. Graziano. All in favor? Yes. 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 Any opposed or abstained? So that's unanimous as well. Um, can I ask a quick question on yes. that just to make sure we're procedurally okay? Do we need to vote to authorize somebody to sign the contract? This is the chair. Typically with the contracts, we right. uh, we approve it and then authorize, I assume, Dr. That's McLeod? a good question. Do you normally sign it? says in the contract, the, the Hopkinton School Committee chair. Oh, is it in here? In, so, I was going to so say, then, given so, that it's a re packet, yeah. <laughs> renewal. That's right. Okay. Just yeah, you're right. It is on there. All right. So is. do you want to just do a second motion? To, it's do I the chair. Okay. So I would move to authorize the, I'm wondering now if this is necessary, but I, I but just in case, Better safe um, so I'll, I'll uh, move that the school committee authorize the chair to sign the school physician contract on the committee's behalf. Thank you. Uh, second. Second. By, so a motion by Mr. Graziano, a second by Ms. Cavanaugh. All in favor? Yes. 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 And any opposed or abstained? So that's unanimous. And I think it's actually in the job description of the chair, but I'm not sure. So at least yeah, we've covered our bases. The chair, I, I agree with you. I'm not yeah. sure you ha we have to, but Good it's point. covered. And, uh, Just trying to extend your meeting. And so what's written on <laughs> so, uh, the amount that's written on the, uh, on the package, mm -hmm. that's what uh, is the final, is yes. the increase, mm -hmm. right? $6,777. That's, that's that's the salary, not that's the, the, that's the total, stipend, total not the not, not the increase. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. yeah. Quarterly payments, yeah. Yeah. And the quarterly payment is for my eyes and $694.25. Exactly. Great. Thank you. 
Thank you. You bet. Okay. Um, so now we have arrived at our second opportunity for public comment, but the public has gone home. So unless one of you would like to make a public comment, we will move on to items by consensus. And I do want to just um, point out before we do this to Jen and Mina. So this. Dr. McLeod will just read all of this and we'll approve it all together as a group, but we do have a practice that if there's if there's anything in here that you have a question on and you'd like to hold out separately, um, you can do that and we'll vote on the rest and we'll go back to it. So um, is there anything that anybody would like to take out of the items by consensus? I do have a question. I mean, um, Ms. Dumas tried to answer all the questions that I had asked. Um, there was one about the, uh, the limit on the checking account mm -hmm. that do we, uh, you know, bring it back to the 100,000 even during the summer. Do we? How does that work? Should I hold off that question for Mr. No. Dumas? No, I, I, I think we do. I, I think see. that I, I think okay. that we do. There's a lot of things that go on during over the summer. summer, a lot of ordering that takes place um, in order to get things ready to roll, paper. I mean, there's just a lot of things that happen. So I think that they are able to keep their balance at that level I see. no matter I what see. time of the year. And now that he's kind of closing up the books for this year, sure. I, th I believe that that was a conversation that he had okay. um, recently with Mr. Bishop. I see. And, and typically at what point do you think of bringing it back, the half point? Like, yes. Okay, perfect. I just wanted to understand. They actually had it increased, right, school committee? They yeah, recently, we, we increased recently the amount think, right? developed because it didn't give them enough yeah. Flexibility. We had to change it at the high schools and school specifically yep. because they had so much money coming in and out for at testing once, and yeah, all of that. That they were scrambling to try to balance that, you know, there just wasn't enough. And so it, it seems like a lot, except that when they need it, they didn't have enough. Right. right. Yeah, um, but, you know, he, Mr. Dumas would also um, call out all the checks and balances that are in place, you know, particularly that he's reviewing all of it, you know, we're audited every few years. but. You know, as you can imagine, nothing gets past his checkpoint in terms of those balances and how the money's being spent. Um, yeah. Yes, I mean, this is the first time approving something, public yeah. money. Of yeah. course. And so, just trying to understand. Um, yes. Know, even approving that small increase on that small amount was a big thing. <laughs> and so, this Good is for certainly you. a much bigger amount. And yeah. so, that's what I had requested, that if we can get a short course on how yes. all the money moves, where it comes from, et cetera, yeah. that would go a long way for mm -hmm. the newbies. Uh, <laughs> you won't be the first. No. no. That request yeah. happens yeah. every, every single year. Right. I did. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and don't ever apologize for questions. So, yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> any, any other questions? Okay, so then I will look to you, Dr. McLeod, for the items by consensus. The superintendent recommends the school committee move to approve the items by consensus as outlined below. So moved. And a second? Second. So motion by Mr. Graziano and a second by Ms. Cavanaugh. All in favor? Yes. 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 Any opposed or abstained? Okay. One abstained. Oh, one abstained. Okay. Um, okay, I'm just writing this. Okay, so that passes four to one. And the reason I say all of that and repeat it is for the, our minutes taker. Um, okay, so we are at the point where we can adjourn our meeting. Our next meetings will be held uh, Thursday, June, June 8th um, at seven o'clock here in the high school library. And then following that is Thursday, June 22nd here in the high school library at seven o'clock. We also will be meeting um, this coming Thursday for senior recognition night and this coming Friday for high school graduation. A week from next week. Um, okay, it's so, still this coming, I suppose. This coming, yeah. <laughs> All right, so I I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. And a second. I'll second it. Okay. <laughs> so motion by Mr. Graziano, second by Miss Devlin. All in favor? Yes. Yes. All opposed or abstained? Okay, so that's unanimous, and we are adjourned at 9:29. Great job. Chair. Chair. Good Good job. Not too bad. Fourteen minutes. First and there were nine minutes of public comments. I'm just saying. Yeah. Mina, when are you leaving? Thank you.